something and I'm working on it right now. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Let's have a few minutes again to let people join us. People are joining the, this uh, important webinar. Uh, we can say this is a historical event in the rock sector, I can say. It's the first time we have two continents together, Europe in Africa. We are Yes, working together in the refrigeration sector. And this is also the first webinar we have multilingual. We have uh, Arab, Arabic simultaneous translation. We have French simultaneous translation and also Portuguese simultaneous translation. This is uh, the first time, it's a historical event. And we as Eutria and Aria, we are proud to say yes, together we can. Yeah, we are here with our colleagues of ARIA, my colleague, president, uh, past president of ARIA, Mr. Marco Boni, uh, and some other colleagues from Europe. We are here with us that oui. for this webinar. Oui, so we, have, we have to pay. Minute uh, time to get people join Zoom, and then we, we will start. We have to remember we have simultaneous translation, so you have just to your channel of language you want to hear, and of course you will hear it. If you want to hear this translation in French, you go to interpretation, choice French, then you will hear in French. If you want to see this interpret hear this interpretation interpretation in Portuguese, just go in interpretation choice Portuguese, and you will hear our uh, colleague Jose is translating in Portuguese. If also you want to hear our translation in Arabic, you are just to go in interpretation choice Arabic, and you will hear our uh, brother Yadzi who is translating, and also he will share the floor with Mr. Landolsi, who sometime will help him for the translation. So, a uh, few more minutes, time to get everyone, and then we will uh, start. As you know, we will have an important activity today. Uh, of course, I will uh, present you the agenda of the meeting of today, and uh, it will be a long webinar. It's not a usual one, it will be at least three hours direct, three hours in which we will want, like to share with all of you, with all technicians in Africa and also around the globe. Because I remember we have more than 400 people registered for this webinar. So that means, uh, and not only from Africa, uh, of course, there are people around the globe who are really registered for this webinar and we are happy uh, to show the way we can go together uh, with new refrigerant, such as flammable refrigerant, and also, of course, uh, uh, the alternative refrigerant that uh, the industry is proposing to our sector, because as you know, by the climate change, we have to do something in terms of uh, kind of refrigerant and also in terms of uh, efficiency. But today we will talk particularly on uh, flammable high refrigerant. There, of course, the problem of flammability is a new issue that technicians have to face. And unfortunately, in Africa, we have already this kind of refrigerant equipment without any training. So this is, will be a beginning. Of course, it's not uh, the first and the last. It will be the beginning of trainings, different kind of training. We start, of course, with webinars, but we hope in the future to have the possibility to make on-seat trainings 
because we know with flammable refrigerant, we need not only on um, webinars, but we need on seat to test and to know exactly what we have to do to avoid fires, to avoid explosion, as of course can bring to death where there are some countries in Africa we are already experiencing this. So is a seven minute after two o'clock a.m. two o'clock p.m. GMT. Uh, I think uh, I, I will start. We will start now. We will start. Uh, we, I will start by showing, sharing with you the agenda of the webinar of today. As you can see, uh, this is the agenda of a webinar. Of course, we organize jointly. Uh, my dear friend, colleague for many years, uh, the past president uh, of you uh, of ARIA, because until last Friday, until eight days, he was the president of uh, um, ARIA. Now he's a past president, but he's uh, in charge of international affairs. If you remember last year, Marco Bone and me, we signed an MOU uh, in Milan, an MOU between Area and Utrea between Europe and Africa. This is the first ever, and we want to give a follow up on this. And this is the first, very first activity we are doing jointly to share something interesting for Europe, but also for Africa. I would think also for everyone in this industry, because as I told you, we have people registering around the global. So I will start with a short presentation of Utrea to show you who, ha, who how Utrea is made. And the second point, and I will show you, of course, uh, the goals, the objective of Utrea. After that, I will share my flo the floor with my colleague, past president, Marco Boni, to sh also share with you some important information regarding trainings and certification uh, scheme we will show you in some short, short slides. After that, we will have uh, Mr. Jose Ribeiro, uh, who will, of course, share some experiences with uh, some Portuguese country, speaking country in Africa, the network is because, as you know, we need more, we need all Africa together. In Africa, we are speaking a lot of languages, we have colleagues, so we have a country where uh, some Africans speak Portuguese, and we want, don't want to keep them behind. So our colleague, uh, Jose, uh, will talk to them in Portuguese in order to share, uh, of course, experiences and ideas with them. We will have also uh, Mr. Ade Ajoola from Nigeria. He's an expert trainer. He will share also uh, experiences about the trainings. After that, we will have uh, uh, Mr. Marino Bassi, who is an expert trainer on flame and refrigerant. He's been in the project of Real Athena and for many years is a member of Tintu uh, Studio Galileo Technical Staff and also a member of ATF. ATF is the Italian uh, Association, a Technician Association. After that, we will have uh, Mr. Kivans. Uh, who is the expert trainer too, who will uh, have to share with us the uh, best practices with, uh, for car uh, carbon dioxide. So we will also li likely explain to the attendee what kind of equipment we have when we use carbon dioxide. After that, of course, we will have uh, a pool. We will have a pool. We will uh, want to hear from you, the attendee, we will want to know uh, very few questions. We have three, four questions. We will like you to answer this question. And then we will go to uh, question time. And then we hope after three hours to give a lot of information on this. So now allow me to, to start with the presentation of uh, shortly, because it's a very important that you who are member of Utria, what is the goal of Utria, and how we can continue to work together in Africa. Here 
uh, we have Eutria is a group of uh, association, is a union of African association, a union of uh, actors of African association in, uh, in refrigeration and air conditioning. We have almost 54 countries, all Africa. In a lot of countries, of course, we have associations. Then we can see the list of the country where they have some association. And the other side, we are working with other country in order to let them get also the national association. This is in progress, but we have in this country a, a folk, a, um, some resource person who are working hardly and we hope sooner new association with John has the last one John has more or less one month ago is the Algerian association and we are working. We will continue. Uh, we have executive uh, executive board is uh, composed of this member. You can see my humble person, Madi Sakande, is a president, <laughs> vice president, Mr. Uh, Arlen <laughs> is a president president for RD Congo. We have uh, a secretary general, Mr. Amuso Kwasi Lucien from Beni. We have a deputy secretary general, uh, Mr. Saeed El Arj from Mor we have a general treasurer, Mr. Lassin Katile from Mali. We have deputy general treasurer, Mr. Stephen Goma from Zambia. We have secretary in charge of communication and external relation, Mr. Basil Seborikoko. We have also his deputy, his Mr. George and Jane from Kenya. And then we believe we live deep, we believe deeply we cannot do it without, without So we have here is Rauda Masoudi, who is please okay, please, Landulsi, Landulsi, stop translation, please, and let uh, let Yazid continue translation. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Landulsi. You have to stop the translation now. Please let Mr. Yazid continue. I will be back to you after. Please. Mr. Langulsi. So, Rada is in charge of mobilization of uh, gender because we believe we cannot do any activity in this world. We, not, we cannot have a change in this world without women. So, in the hour, it's very important to have a mobilization of ladies. Then, Ms. Rauda Masaudi is in charge of mobilization of ladies in refrigeration sector. So, uh, this is uh, how we are divided in different group. This is the organigram of Utrea. We are General Assembly, General Assembly, composed by three major actors in every single association, national association. We have a president, we have a secretary general, a general secretary, and also the treasurer. In every association, we have these three figures who have a representative of the National Association in General Assembly. And then we have the executive board. Your executive board are present to the executive board a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago. We are also the committee of the president. I have to remember that we start in 2019, our activity to fund u and we start with the committee of president. We contact every single president around the globe, around Africa to share the idea to put uh, all the technicians together to keep all associations together to have your triad. So we have a committee of only presidents. Of course, we have a group of ladies. Uh, this group is only with four ladies in every single country who are in refrigeration sector. Is a WhatsApp group where ladies are sharing experiences in rack sector. This is very important to have an idea how to help ladies to. Uh, continue to work in the refrigeration sector or, and to bring also the young girls in the refrigeration sector. We have a committee of languages, as I told you, we have a lot of uh, countries, uh, uh, we have a lot of languages in Africa. We only take the, the five languages, we in Africa we speak French, English, 
Arabic, Portuguese, and Spanish. And this group uh, is a group of five people who are speaking these uh, five languages who suppose in the new future to translate all our activities in the different language. We are also a group of training, trainers team. The trainers team is of all trainers in the rock sector in Africa, because this is a very, very, very important group. We believe that all trainers have to share their curricula, they have to share their experiences between trainers in Africa, but on, because on the, on the end of the day, we would like to have an overview. We would like to have one curricula for African technician. So we have to put all technicians, all trainers together around the continent, and they are sharing between them uh, some in, in, important information. And then we have a technical committee. The technical committee is made by continental expert. Every expert in around Africa is in this group. And this group is divided in five working groups. The group of training. So this group is a group of people who are working on trainings. The other group uh, is working in legislation and standard is important to see uh, in the world what legislation and what standard we have because of course we would like also to give an idea of legislation and standard to work our authority, to our decision maker, to be able to have in African um, legislation and standard on refrigeration sector. We are also the project and promotion and human capital is very important. We are in Africa, we have a manpower and you have to see how to promote this uh, uh, capital, uh, human capital. So this group also is thinking about that. We have refrigerant and global technology. This group is working um, to, to, to have an overview of the refrigerant in the, in the globe and technology a lot. And then we will have another group who is a futuristic group, but we believe deeply we have to see, we remove heat and to let you feel uh, uh, cool. So uh, with equipment, we have to see how some equipment can be suitable for African. As all, you all know, all equipment are not made for Africa because in the beginning, the temperature of reference is not African climate. So we have to rethink or to uh, design or to make equipment for African market because this here is a hot climate. We have 30 degrees in Africa. We don't have, it's not too hot as in Europe, for example. So we have to review that the temp high, here is a high temperature climate. So we have to change also to charge the refrigerant, which can work properly in an African continent. It's very important that, but this is your future. And for the moment, we are consumer. Like also to address this issue in terms of uh, uh, efficiency, because if we, the machine, the equipment is efficient in Western country, but if you bring it in, in Africa, it's not efficient because of course, the, the, the climate is different, the temperature is different, and of course, we are on the same problem. So this, uh, I will uh, slide broadly on uh, our objective, objective of u 3 of course, to develop uh, program and on refrigeration in both formal and non-formal. As you know, we have a lot of technicians in Africa. We are not, unfortunately, in formal setting, but we are not left nobody behind. All Africans will include, and we will also in our future, we hope to be able to give even training in our mother tongues. We know we, we are talking. We have a lot of thousands of uh, hundred thousand of mother tongues here. We will hope one day to translate it, but because not techni all technicians have been to school and is not sure that we will understand everything. We have created a website. We have already our website is our active. This activity is done. Utreact.org to stimulate access to African professional in new technology. For example, for by this webinar for a solidarity among uh, refrigeration, refrigeration specialists. Uh, organizing a refreshing update course on technician. This is, for example, this one of activity. Arranging cooperation with I Institute, providing training on refrigeration, developing cooperation relations with international refrigeration specialists. This, uh, for example, is an example of uh, our goals we are go going on. Sorry, I have to move. My dashboard. Okay, label what did this is a futuristic idea, but it's one of our goals. 
labeling refrigeration uh, works in cre creation, encouraging the participation of professional to international fair and forums, empowering African experts. Working toward improving the environment by uh, encouraging the use of uh, substances in control greenhouse uh, gas emissions and promoting energy efficiency, working toward promoting gender and women mobilization for refrigeration and air conditioning businesses, support and adopt general interests. And let me continue to the next one. Okay, making sure that any event hosted by UTREA is a crucial meeting in for the sector. So this webinar is, for example, a crucial meeting. Support technical information and experience in sharing as well. No, this is what we are doing in this all encouraging and participating in joint projects related to the sector. And this also is one of this uh, pro, uh, our project. Of course, be a, in, in, in a partner with all other institutions who wish are our same goal. So I will stop here. This is just to show you our goals. We have a lot of activity in agenda. Uh, to be short, this presentation, you will receive it uh, by, by the end of this uh, webinar. I will stop here. We have a lot of activity in agenda. I will share my floor now with uh, my colleague, Marco Boni, we, who is, will present you, of course, uh, the idea of activity made in around Africa and what we can do in the future. The floor is yours, Marco. Can you hear me well? Can you see my screen? Yes, I got you, Marco. Very good. So, good afternoon, Africa. It's for me an honor to be here. I'm the former president of AREA, the European Association of Refrigeration. With me are my colleagues. Jose Ribeiro from Portugal, Apurac, is Marino Bassi from ATF Italy, and Kivan Chaslantas from Turkey. We are the European Association of Refrigeration and Conditioning, and we are honored to be partner with UFRIAR. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. We have 80 people plus today now, and more are growing, so I'm happy to share what we have done in Europe. My agenda is very short. I want to tell you what we are, what is going on in our sector, what we can we could provide for you, and what we have already done. I will be really short. Um, we are an association of associations like you free arc. We were established in 1989, so more than nearly 40 years ago. 25 associations of Europe, 21 countries. We represent the people that design, install, maintain every kind of refrigeration and conditioning it pumps unit. And we are the essential link between the end user, so the customer and the manufacturer, the one that install and link together. And the, our sector is so important. We represent as area all these countries here, and we are very happy to help Africa on doing that. I'm also uh, the Secretary General of uh, ATF and uh, Centro Studi Galileo. Centro Studi Galileo is a training provider, training center. We provide training. We work in the Real Alternatives for Life project, which is a EU funding project. So it's funded by you for doing training on alternative refrigerant. We are all moving on alternative refrigerant and we have to do it in the proper way. All together, we have to do it properly for safety and also for the environment and of course for the comfort and the sustainability of the cold chain. Cetostigale also does magazines and have a website. In Europe, we have already trained a lot of people. We have already certified a lot of people. Around half million technicians has been certified under the traditional gases, but now we have to go uh, above, ahead, to do more. We have to go on alternative refrigerants because we have a Kigali Amendment and also in Europe, we have a new regulation. We are going to phase down 
all traditional refrigerants. We are going to use alternative refrigerants, which are flammable, toxic, we said it. We are using refillable cylinders. We do leak checking, periodic inspection of a system to check that they are working properly, not leaks and good working systems. And we are doing a lot of training and certification, and we have the right equipment. We have a good equipment for doing our job. And also we have a record keeping and register a database for registering all the systems and everything we do. So um, in Europe, we are training for Kigali. We want to train for Kigali worldwide because in this uh, way, we have a better um, sector, more competence, more skilled personnel and companies, and also better equipped technician and companies. We also recovery, reuse, reclaim the refrigerants. We have lower quantities or high global warming potential refrigerants. I remember you did recently a webinar as you free art about the environment, so you should know it, but we are going to uh, decrease the refrigerants, which high the GOP, with some that are very flammable, so very risky. So we need competence, we need training. And we developed a training scheme, a training program called Real Alternatives, which is already available. You can go on the website, realalternatives.eu, and learning online, what we said many times, that is important, the practice, handling the refrigerant, handling the systems, working, use your hand on the system and check that is, uh, you're doing everything in the right way. We have nine modules with free e-learning online with 17 languages, 20 countries using it already. We do theory in classroom or remote, but best practice in our fully equipped laboratories worldwide in the green countries you can see, and I would like more African country to join, but we are very happy to come to Africa as I will show you later. And we did already certification to 2,000 technicians so far. These are the languages and these are the partners. You can see Portuguese, French, English, uh, and many other languages. Turkish is all available. We are missing Arabic. It will be nice to have also in Arabic in the future real alternatives, the manuals. You will receive the PowerPoints in Arabic from UFREARC. Thank you, UFREARC, for translating them in Arabic. So going further, what we do, what we give to the technician that participate to our training. We give a manual, we do an exam, an assessment, theoretical assessment and a practical assessment to check that the technician is certified, is competent. And also we give a list of equipment to training center. We give what should be the list. We assess the training center to check that they have everything needed. Also, we design test trick and we give the minimum requirement for doing our training. We give also some video demonstration and also the trainers. We, we say what should be the qualification of the trainers. And then, of course, we do the training and the certification and also the marketing. We have nine modules already available and already downloadable from a website. The main are about safety and risk management, but also about design differences, containment. Because again, if you have a leak, so you have refrigerants going out of a system with a traditional refrigerant, you're going to arm the environment. But you have, if you have a leak with a flammable uh, propane, you make in danger yourself and your customer. So it is as dangerous as the other traditional refrigerant, probably even more. Few slides from your alternatives, you can see them online. Also the recovery is very important, in particular for propane, there are only two manufacturers available for recovery machine. So still there are very few, but you should have all this equipment, which I'm going to list you in a minute. Videos. And all the videos are in the YouTube channel of the Yellow Alternatives. So one example of a two days training course for flammable refrigerant. Remember, 
two days only for people that already know about traditional refrigerants. So they already have five days of gas, five days traditional refrigerants. But uh, uh, two days is only for the flammable part. So we give a specification, the assessment, and the test. The program we have in these two days, again, in particular for the flammability, the safety, the service, the service procedure, and also how to work safely in your uh, system, work safely in your room, uh, prevent leakages, prevent uh, sparks, prevent uh, all kind of fire is in this room in which you are doing the service. And also the training provider, but those the technician should have all this list of equipment. So you can see quite uh, straight away that there you can have, uh, you should have personal protective equipment, always glove, goggles, uh, shoes, safety shoes, etc. You should have uh, uh, an extinguisher, uh, leak detector, uh, flammable refrigerant uh, test system, uh, vacuum machine, recovery unit, vacuum charge, uh, etc. etc. Uh, cylinders, uh, everything is needed for you to work. I told you the practical part is the most important one. Is the one you need to know to do it properly. And so we teach you plan for working a flammable refrigerant system, prepare work areas, refrigerant recovery, components and placement, pressure testing, charging, etc. Assessment approach. I'm going near to the end just to show you also that we have a theoretical exam as well. 60% for theory. Instead, for the practical part, you need to complete all the activity in a safety manner. At the end, we give you a certificate. The certificate is already mandatory in few European countries, probably will be mandatory globally very soon because we want to work safely. We said it many times, but we never be bored to repeat it safety working. This um, certificate, you can see, is for flammable refrigerant theory and practice. The flammable refrigerant are hydrocarbons, HFO, R32. The same with carbon dioxide. Today, my colleagues, Maria Bassi, will talk about flammables, and Kivanch will talk about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, a little uh, more, uh, little um, longer the training, three days. So what we did till now in Tunisia, last time you discussed, we did a great job. We did training session and material. We gave certification sessions and material. We helped to draft a certification scheme of legislation. Uh, we assessed the training center. We went in the several training center in Tunisia and we assessed also the legislation. And we gave some ideas of strategies to reduce HFCs, banks import face down. We helped to, uh, to, to write a roadmap to the Kigali Amendment, to drive to Kigali Amendments and to achieve it. And we did the same in several countries. In this picture in Madagascar uh, with the MADI, we were there and doing a very good training. We went also around the Africa, we went to Gambia, we went to Rwanda, uh, Ghana, Benin, Eritrea, et cetera, et cetera. In Egypt last year, I was in Egypt myself when training a certification. We all have an idea of how to doing because we found out which is the best way to start helping and achieve a good work, sustainable work for the technicians, training and certification. I'm going to an end. We help to write legislation. We support you on the way of Kigali. We implement the scheme. We give training certification session. We suggest tools for the safe use of flammable refrigerants or alternative refrigerants. And we do it all together, Europe, Africa, Globally, we have the same problems. We have the same solution. So it is important to have a national certification scheme for each country. Each country is different. In Africa, each country is different. We have, of course, similarities, 
you can take, but you should implement and customize to your needs. So we are happy to help you. Thank you so much. We do it together, stronger. We are together. Thank you. Can you hear me? No, Mari, you are muted. Okay, thank you so much, Marco. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for this presentation. Now we have to go ahead with uh, our colleague from Portugal. Now I have to switch him from interpreter because he is doing two activities. He is a interpreter and also he is a, a speaker. Now I will put him as a speaker. Then okay. we will allow to, to have a short uh, presentation. Of course, have a speech. Uh, Marco, you can take away your presentation, your uh, sharing. We will now get uh, Jose. Jose, okay. how to share uh, three, five minutes in Portuguese for the Portuguese audience. And of course, he will be so kind to translate it in English for okay. our poor people who are not a lot to understand Portuguese. Okay, I will speak. Uh, I'll, hello, everybody. I'm Jose Ribeiro from Portugal. I will speak firstly in English uh, to say that we are from, I'm from APIRAC, which is a Portuguese association, uh, which is established since 1975 and always been defending in the interests of their associations in the cold and climatization in Portugal. Uh, we are together in Portugal. Portugal is an association of Portuguese uh, uh, official language, which are PALOP, where are all the Portuguese countries, uh, all the African countries that speak Portuguese. And there's a community of interesting uh, uh, countries where they are common, they work together uh, from Angola, Cabo Verde, Guinea, Mozambique, Saint Tome. Uh, and these countries have been taking protocols of cooperation with several, several issues to in, in culture, education, economy, and diplomacy. We in APIRAC, in, in HVAC systems, uh, we can try to process some of this real alternative information and issues uh, towards this uh, pilot to increase and bring the information to these countries uh, closely. Thank you. Agora vou falar um bocadinho em português para todos os que me estão a ouvir. Eu sou da APIRAC, é uma associação portuguesa uh, que, foi, que se constituiu em 1975. Uh, uh, para o setor do frio e da climatização. A PIRAC reparte-se por diferentes áreas, desde formação profissional até apoio jurídico e organização, seminários, colóquios, etc., e sempre a defender os interesses. O que eu vos queria chamar a atenção é que nós temos uma comunidade de, português, de, de países de língua oficial portuguesa, que são os PALOP, onde Portugal está incluído, Uh, onde, que é composto uh, por vários países, que nos consigo dizer todos, Angola, Cabo Verde, Guiné, Moçambique, Santo Tomé, uh, Brasil, mas uh, sobretudo em África, que é o que nos interessa para agora. E nestes países têm vindo a ser desenvolvidos protocolos de cooperação internacional uh, nos campos da cultura, educação e economia, e nós poderemos transportar este projeto do, de Real Alternatives, dos, dos gases de dos refrigerantes alternativos, peço perdão, dentro desta organização, por forma a transportar esta, toda a experiência, todo o conhecimento, através da organização PALOP, para todos os membros. A APIRAC está disponível para colaborar e para ajudar no que for necessário. Podem contar comigo ou podem falar diretamente com o Marco Pony. Muito obrigado e continuação do bom seminário. Okay, thank you, I'm done. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I hope this webinar continues uh, 
in a, a wonderful way as it has been until now. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you, Jose, for sharing. We are very glad to have you among us. It's very important. We have to remember all our uh, all our audience from uh, uh, Portuguese speaking country. We are Africa, and of course, all of you are welcome on our activity. And we want to continue to work together because Africa is Africa. We have our diversity, but we remain Africa and this is our riches. So we have to continue to make it valuable, our riches of languages, of culture, of everything. We have different colors, but we remain Africa. So uh, I would like to give a floor to Mr. Ade Abujola from Lagos, Nigeria. Of course, uh, who is working deeply in refrigeration sector. He has a training center. A lot of training has been then done there by NARA. NARA, you know, is a Nigeria association, a full member of Utrea. And Mr. Ade will uh, share with us uh, the idea what how refrigeration training is important in mainly in uh, this uh, particular moment of change from R22, I can say, in Africa to alternative refrigerant. We already know that we have some flammable refrigerant R, has R32 or R219 that you know have flammable use it in air conditioning in Africa. Mr. Ade, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, greetings to everybody from your part of the world. Greetings to everybody in Africa to my friends in Europe. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to have an assembly like this. So I'm gonna be a balance uh, uh, between what Madi started with and what uh, Marco said and what everybody has been saying here. Uh, importantly is that uh, we are in an industry that cannot be put to an end. Uh, they exist for the sake of humanity. Refrigeration until there's no food again. That's when there'll be no refrigeration until there is no air again, that's when there'll be no air conditioning. So for us, for Mandy to have put this together, I think you deserve you know, a great honor uh, for bringing this assembly into reality. And for my friends from Europe, uh, particularly in the era of uh, alternative refrigerants and the need for us to be more uh, uh, safety conscious as we handle refrigeration. So I, I would like a situation where we can have an another assembly where the training will be focused on the originality of some of the concept of Africa refrigeration and air conditioning. But before then, we're gonna to have to bridge, have to build a bridge with three, with you three has built for us. And so it is important that we leverage on this uh, association uh, to be able to use refrigeration and air conditioning in Africa as a tool for development, as a tool for enhancement, as a tool to liberate ourselves truly, why align to the best global practice. Um, um, uh, I have been in business for a while, for about 36 years plus now. Uh, like Madi mentioned, uh, I, I have a, something that you can call out of this Africa environment, the refrigeration training center in Nigeria. Uh, we hope to develop more across Africa uh, if we can leverage on some of the opportunities that are available for us so that we can be truly in Africa in content and in our outlook. Um, uh, I heard uh, uh, Marco talk about uh, the issue of trainings that has been performing across the world earlier on. I, I'm a witness to some of the exploit that has been carried on in Africa uh, by its organizations uh, in terms of development skills uh, in Africa. And I think the time has come now where some of this concept has to be indigenized. Not often all the time we can apply some of those standards and code directly. There are some of us who have also modified some of the standards 
that are used in Europe, in America, uh, in Africa. And so the time has come for us to showcase all of these elements while working with our partners and while showing that uh, refrigeration as a business has come to stay in Africa and Africa must play a very prominent role in this regard. So uh, Madi, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to be here today. I am sorry I'm not going to be able to say much because I'm also in the middle of another meeting, which is the meeting of our industry as well. So I thank you so much and I look forward to a very exciting time here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ade, for being here because it is very important what you share. Your experience is very important for us in, in, in Africa. As you know, we are just starting join together. We need all of you. We need all African experts together. We know we is a long journey. Just start now. We want it to continue. And we want all of you, all of you, uh, expert or not in the African sector, you want to mobilize all Africans in, in rack sector because, as you say, the refrigeration sector is very important for the development of our continent. That means we have all to be aware about that and we have to work together to let our leaders, our political leaders, our economical le leaders, who, whoever is in Africa talking about development in Africa, to take in consideration to develop the refrigeration sector. Because with the refrigeration sector, we will be able to start a real development of our dear continent. We need refrigeration to preserve our food stuff. You know, 80%, I say very well, 80%, 80% of African population are doing three activity, three main activity because they are living in rural area and they are making breeding, agriculture, and fishing where there is water. And all of you know, as the expert of refrigeration, without refrigeration, we cannot preserve the product coming from these three activities. That means that we are working, but unfortunately, we cannot live with the product of their job. Finally, people are leaving rural area to create uh, city, not smart city, but a city with a lot of problems. But with a refrigeration, sustainable refrigeration, we of course using why not um, some technology, some new technology of energy. We are talking about solar power system or some other technology. System. Powered all refrigeration system and allow African agricultural sector to be able to provide to give more food to Africans and to preserve 70%, I say 70%, 70% of what Africa producers are doing in agro-industry is losing because of lack of coal chain. This is a shame for a continent where we are talking every day about development. What kind of development can we have if we are not able to feed our people? To feed our people, we need refrigeration to preserve our food step. And if we are able to preserve our food step, to give to all Africans something to eat. So we can talk about freedom, we can talk about development. And now I will share the floor to Mr. Uh, Marino Bassi. Mr. Marino Bassi, of course, will talk about good practices for flammable refrigerant. As yeah. I told you, we are going from R22 in Africa to R219 or R232. All these refrigerants are flammable. Unfortunately, we have almost experienced uh, fires in Africa uh, because, of course, of lack of knowledge about how to manage flammable refrigerant. Now I will share the floor to Mr. Marino Bassi, who will show. Yes. Thank you, Marino. Before. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, Marino. Yes, okay. Well, uh, uh, I have to thank all the people. And uh, as Marco said, me too, I am uh, proud uh, to participate uh, to this event. <clears throat> and uh, uh, from my long experience, it's the first time of such a massive extended uh, event uh, dedicated uh, to, uh, to Africa. 
is a long time that I am working in this field. I used to travel a lot uh, in Africa uh, years ago when uh, refrigeration was developing uh, and commercial refrigeration, plug-in cabin, etc. So, and uh, uh, I try to transmit quickly in this uh, short, let uh, say, meeting with you, the experience accumulated with the flammable refrigerant. It's many years that I also am working with a flammable refrigerant to do my activity with the company that produces hermetic compressors for household and commercial refrigerations. <clears throat> I uh, contribute, I can say, to the penetration and diffusion of a, a natural refrigerant or the flammable refrigerant hydrocarbons in uh, uh, household and commercial applications. Uh, um, we are living in a period of uh, great transition, great changes, uh, including in refrigeration. Several reasons uh, are uh, moving from HFCs to uh, alternative refrigerants uh, uh, with uh, low GWP <clears throat> in order to uh, comply with regulation, with uh, environmental protections, energy saving. <clears throat> And uh, <clears throat> this alternative refrigerant, uh, as uh, Marco and Madi said, introduce uh, uh, additional risk to the HFC. Speaking about the flammable refrigerant, the risk of course is flammable or eventually uh, explosion. Uh, um, however, it's important, uh, uh, it's possible, it's not, it's not so difficult and we have to do uh, to work safety with this type of refrigerant as with the other refrigerant, if you know what to do. Uh, the knowledge is the fundamental for the good practice uh, with all refrigerant and for the flammable refrigerant. Mm -hmm. So the formation is the base uh, for respecting <coughs> our integrity and the people that is around integrity. And formation means uh, to have the proper training and to have the proper training uh, suppliers. For these reasons, and uh, this uh, speech, I will uh, refer to the real alternative trainings. Uh, Mark explained before how uh, it is realized this training, the success of this training that uh, uh, is used, uh, widely used, not only in Europe, but also outside Europe. And we think it will be used also in uh, Africa and other countries. And what you will see in my presentation is just uh, except is extracted as it is from real alternative. Uh, from the different modules, I took the interesting part for the flammable refrigerant and organized in a logic way that you can find all these in the modules that uh, Marco showed you before on real alternative training that, uh, by the way, is also, also free of charge. Well, uh, um, this is a demonstrative training. It does intend to be a, a real technical training. We have no time enough, of course. But uh, I have to say that uh, what uh, we assume is that the technician already know what to do with the HFC. And uh, we focus on the differences between HFC and hydrocarbon or other flammable refrigerants, mainly for the safety aspects. Uh, the argument that we will see uh, intend to cover quickly the uh, uh, different uh, topics like flammable refrigerant characteristics, uh, safety design criteria, installation and uh, the, the maximum charge size, how it can be determined, and maintenance and repair. This is underlined because experience uh, in the field uh, and Madi spoke quickly also about Africa. Experience in the field uh, evidence demonstrated that if there are some accidents, if there are some problems, mainly they happen in the field uh, when repairing cabinet by people that are not properly trained, doesn't know properly how to manage the various refrigerants and the flammable refrigerants in particular. So the characteristic of flammable refrigerants uh, we will speak about uh, the most used uh, refrigerant, R32, flammable refrigerant, mildly flammable refrigerant, R32, 
for air conditioning, R134A for some refrigeration application, and hydrocarbons, uh, propane, uh, uh, propylene, mainly propane, and isobutane that are used propane for commercial applications, mainly plug-in, large, uh, even large uh, plug-in application, and isobutane, mainly for small uh, commercial applications and household. And the, and what are the key fact, the key element uh, of uh, this uh, uh, flammable refrigerant? They, of course, are flammable, we say, and are classified, are divided as uh, uh, lower flammability, mildly flammability. The key fact is the main risk. The main risk for CO2 is high pressure, for ammonia is toxicity, for the flammable refrigerants, uh, mildly or highly flammable is flammability. They are characterized by a low GWP, so a low impact uh, on the uh, uh, greenhouse uh, effect. Uh, R32 is 675, but is uh, 50% then uh, R134A. And uh, uh, the, they are used, uh, that quickly already I said, for the hydrocarbons. <coughs> The fees that we know are classified according to ISO in a class uh, with uh, reference to the uh, toxicity, letter A or B, and uh, flammability. Flammability by number one, two L, two, and uh, three. Uh, one are not flammable, like the R134A, 404A. Not flammable when tested in certain conditions, not flammable absolutely. You know, they can uh, burn, of course, in other conditions, but are not flammable for refrigeration. A2L, what is the element that characterizes the flammability? There are three elements. First, the lower flammability level, and the threshold is 3.5. The heat of combustion, combustion that is joule per kilos, minus or higher than 19,000 uh, joule per kilos, and the flame propagation, that is the maximum burning velocity, that is the diffusion speed of the flame in the uh, flammable mixture. Uh, um, the higher flammability, they have a lower flammability level lower than 3.5, uh, ethyl combustion, uh, uh, Iga and propane is uh, over 40,000 and exhibit a flame propagation higher than 10 centimeter. Propane, for example, is around 42, 43 uh, meter uh, per uh, centimeter per second. <clears throat> uh, according to this uh, classification, you can see here uh, the classification said before, the lower flammability limits of the various uh, substances. As you can see, the hydrocarbon have a lower flammability level that is uh, around one tenth, let me say, one eighth of the uh, A2L. So it means uh, that uh, the refrigerant charge of this uh, type of refrigerant has to be reduced uh, compared to the A2L. The, uh, Auto ignition is the temperature of flammability at, uh, uh, without other source, just the temperature. The practical limit is the safety limit that is used for calculating the mass refrigerant charge. Practically, for propane, is eight uh, uh, gram per cubic meter of uh, the volume of the, the, the room where it is uh, inside the applications. <clears throat> There are, another, there are a particular risk linked to the HFC and the HFO, and this is the fact that they form a toxic product for the composition if they burn. And uh, they form a, a hydrogen fluoride and fluoride of hydrofluoric acid that uh, can, be, uh, can uh, generate a very severe uh, 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 problem if inhalated, for example. This is particularly evidence for the uh, uh, HFO, for the uh, uh, flammable, mildly flammable refrigerants or DFC, like R32, because uh, 
because they burnt uh, if ignited, for example, by an open flame. <clears throat> the concept for safety use of combustion uh, uh, is quickly displayed in this diagram. Practically, to have, an, in, to have an, uh, a flame, you need to have air that is always there, to have a leak of refrigerants that form a flammable mixture. And if in that volume where is the flammable mixture, you have a source of ignition active at that moment, you need a contemporaneity of the present of flammable mixture and source of ignition active, you generate <clears throat> flame. For this reason, the concept is to separate, to keep away flammable uh, uh, atmosphere from the source of emission. <clears throat> and for example, in safety design of the cabinets, of the applications, in order to reduce the risk, no source of emission uh, has to be inside potentially flammable zone. So has to be removed. If uh, a leakage, uh, if a refrigerant leak, the flammable refrigerant, uh, is in contact or around uh, uh, an electrical device, this device has to be of no sparking type. This is the two concept that is the basic of the safety in not only in design, but also in repairing uh, the cabinet. When you intend for designing the cabinet, and this is uh, quickly presented in this table, and you have to practically, you have to follow, to consider this element regardless uh, the quantity of refrigerant charge. Even if you have 60 grams, 50 grams, like in the household refrigerators, you have to consider the zone where a leakage can generate a flammable uh, atmosphere, a flammable mixture. Then you have to check if there are uh, source of ignition inside the zone. After this analysis, there are different options to adopt. You have to move away the source of ignition or replace the source of ignition with the suitable uh, devices. That is the one approved uh, safety uh, anti-spark by the uh, safety approval board. So uh, <clears throat> according to the international standard or national standard. Or another way is to increase the airflow in order to dilute the concentration of the uh, refrigerant that leak uh, from a certain part of the cabinet. Or if the installation is quite big, locate the source of ignition in an enclosure. This is not done on the small cabinet, the plug-in cabinet, because it's quite expensive. So the small, the small cabinet use these three types of uh, solution. Mainly, they remove, they put away the uh, uh, um, sparking element uh, from the uh, uh, flammable atmosphere that can be generated, or use electrical components that are not sparking. For example, the electrical components of the compressors uh, using propane or flammable refrigerant are different than the electrical components of the uh, compressor using R134A. Uh, that component for flammable refrigerant, like propane, for example, <coughs> are anti-spark, so are semi-sealed and, and approved according to a specific IEC standard. Uh, ventilation, I said, can deal with the concentration and uh, avoid uh, the uh, formation of the atmospheric, uh, explosive atmospheric, However, need to pay attention to the fact that, uh, for example, uh, you can have a full condenser. So circulation of the air is not uh, sufficient to have the dilution. Or uh, worse, uh, you can have a fail on the uh, electrical motor, on the fan motor. And this is uh, the most critical situation, mainly if is, this is the primary protection method uh, of the source of ignition. Also electrical components has to be uh, carefully uh, uh, adapted, carefully selected and uh, uh, treated. Uh, uh, 
the elliptical connection, uh, uh, like the connection on the terminal board of compressor, for example, uh, for itself are not considered <coughs> uh, flammable uh, source of uh, ignitions. They become hazardous if you disconnect uh, while they are energized. Uh, all, so uh, also the, the fuse uh, uh, has, has to be installed in a fuse uh, uh, enclosure that is interlocked in order not to extract the fuse uh, when it uh, is energized. <clears throat> and uh, the seeded uh, single core uh, uh, should not be used for leave uh, part, uh, can be used uh, for the neutral or can be used for uh, ground, but not for leave part, unless they are not, of course, uh, inside uh, equipment with or enclosure. Regarding the installation and maximum refrigerant charge, uh, is an important point, uh, mainly for the larger uh, plug-in cabinet or for the uh, system using uh, uh, hydrocarbons or other flammable refrigerants. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the fact that uh, if we are using flammable uh, refrigerants, there are restrictions on their use, on, mainly on the quantity of refrigerants. A charge is limited uh, for many applications. The EN378 that is uh, aligned very similar to the ISO, to the equivalent ISO 5149, uh, uh, provide the, the, uh, 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 the way, uh, the, the guideline to define the maximum refrigerant charge uh, uh, allowable. Uh, this it depends from four parameters, the refrigerant characteristics, the assess category where the uh, uh, system is, in, the machine, the system cabinet is installed, the type of system, if it's for comfort, air conditioning, or pump, uh, or other application refrigeration, and the location of the classification, uh, uh, the location classification of the equipment. If the equipment is old, in uh, a room or part is outside, part inside, like in the split air condition. According to this uh, uh, category, uh, there are two tables on this uh, uh, regulation and on the equivalent ISO that address you for flammable refrigerant to the table two, where you can find the element that uh, tell you the max refrigerant charge. Uh, the, uh, uh, category uh, the, 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 of the ambient where you install the cabinet are three class. Uh, one that is general, uh, uh, general use uh, of this uh, ambient, one that is uh, limited uh, use like office laboratories, and the other one, for example, that is the cold room uh, or uh, the, the central uh, station, <coughs> central uh, cooling station, where only authorized person can enter inside. Then the equipment has other classification. Uh, for example, the plug-in cabinet, all the system are located within the, the occupied space. Uh, and then uh, other classification up to the uh, uh, machinery room <coughs> or open air and uh, the ventilated enclosure. However, just to, to keep simply this because it's a, a long matter, let me look at an example. Hmm? Uh, for example, to calculate the minimum room volume for uh, uh, a cabinet using propylene that is similar to propane installed in a supermarket or in a shop, let me say selling uh, goods. Hmm? The refrigerant, we said, uh, is classified class uh, three. So we have uh, A3. So you have to use uh, the uh, C2 uh, table on the uh, regulation. The access uh, supermarket is open, is free access. So it's category A. The application is refrigeration, so other application. And the equipment is uh, type one, located inside the car, inside the ambient where people 
without knowledge on the risk can enter. Mm? <clears throat> so if you go to the table C2 on these regulations that I cannot show this regulation because it's not allowed to show for the infringement of the copyright. Uh, if you go on this uh, table two, you, you will see that the maximum charge is 20% is the, is the practical limit that I showed you before is 20% of the lower flammable limit, multiply the room volume, it has to be more than 1.5 gram. So applying this formula, the charge uh, uh, is 350 gram divided 0 to or the low flammability limit, provide you uh, 38 square meter minimum, uh, uh, square uh, 38 cubic meter, is the minimum volume where you should place uh, your, uh, your machine. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, normally the ambient is bigger. Uh, however, is a check important to do in order to install the cabinet in the proper ambient in the allowed ambient. Now let me, let me come to the main uh, uh, arguments uh, regarding safety for people that have to uh, repair and maintain the system, that is the repairing uh, operation. Uh, uh, is uh, important in all the activity, but mainly when you work with uh, uh, flammable refrigerants uh, to carry out a risk assessment uh, to evaluate the risk of your activity prior to start your activity. Another important thing that can avoid uh, accident is to remember that uh, if you are not sure uh, about something, do not proceed, but uh, clarify the matter before to uh, go. Uh, use the uh, protection uh, uh, devices and also use the anti-static wrist uh, strap uh, uh, when you operate uh, with uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, we don't spoke before, but the uh, uh, energy, the ignition energy, minimum ignition energy for hydrocarbon, for propane, for example, is very low. It's uh, around uh, 0 0.46, 0 0.48 millijoule. So, a electrostatic spark uh, of the, the human body, the rest of the human body, uh, can generate uh, much higher uh, uh, energy and uh, can uh, uh, ignite uh, a flammable refrigerant. Uh, uh, here is, are indicated the, uh, uh, a guide practically what you should care in order to uh, work safety with flammable refrigerant. Just to keep uh, uh, easier, let me speak about propane, huh? for example, that uh, are highly flammable. What is valid for propane is valid also for R32 and uh, the other SFO. Hmm? Uh, the work area has to be very well ventilated and free from source uh, uh, of emission. The equipment has to be suitable for uh, uh, propane hydrocarbons and free from source of emissions. Uh, the leak test, the same matter. The charging has to be uh, uh, with hydrocarbon has to be done carefully uh, because uh, uh, the charge normally is less than 50%, is 40, 45% of a refrigerant charge when using uh, 404A or R134A. And, uh, 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 several countries allowed uh, not uh, to recover, but to uh, uh, vent in the atmosphere, the hydrocarbon, you have to recover HFC and SFO, but uh, is allowed uh, to vent a small amount uh, of hydrocarbon. Normally for small amount is intended 150 grams. That is the, the according to the regulation, the limit for the free installation of the cabinet. <laughs> However, even uh, ideal, let you say, even the double, uh, it can be vent in safety condition, of course. <clears throat> the risk assessment that we said before, that is an activity 
that strongly I recommend to carry out before to start uh, uh, the repairing uh, procedure, if you have to open the refrigeration system, if you risk to have refrigerants uh, uh, dispersion in the ambient, is to carry out the risk assessment. Real alternative, and this is the, the example that I report here, uh, uh, show a, uh, uh, an example, a simple example of carry out a risk assessment. For example, the activity on uh, recovery uh, uh, propylene, the same as propane, in a supermarket. Mm -hmm. Risk assessment, what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, to evaluate an event uh, with the probability that the event can happen and the severity that the, epe, that the event can generate. Uh, uh, there are here a, a simple classification of one to three uh, uh, for the unlikely or for the uh, almost certain and severity from uh, catastrophic, that means dead of people, uh, or uh, a minor or marginal injury. And uh, uh, in this table of the evaluation matrix uh, with severity and likelihood uh, uh, on the two axes, you have to be in the lower corner in order to have low risk. Uh, uh, for example, if you take this operation of recovery refrigerant in supermarket, you have to consider all the risk. Uh, the first one that you think about is uh, for this, the generate flame, the combustion. Who is the people that can be involved? The technician and the shop, uh, shop uh, staff. Of course, you have to, uh, to keep away the uh, staff people. You have to uh, delimit the area, area where you work in order to eliminate the possibility that people enter in that, let me say, possible dangerous area. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have to take in consideration all the control measures and adopt the control measure. So uh, work uh, uh, is carried out outside the trading hours. I think that all, in all the country, this is required also by the regulation. In Europe, you cannot go to repair a, a cabinet in a supermarket or in a bar or in a restaurant uh, open to the public part uh, <clears throat> during the working hours. You have to make barrier around your working air, as I said before. Uh, the working area has to be very well ventilated and you can put a fan, sure for hydrocarbons, uh, sure for flammable refrigerants, in order to have the proper ventilation. Uh, the source of emission has to be three meters away from the point where you operate, at least three meters. Three meters is considered a safety volume, a safety, let me say, semisphere, no? <clears throat> a safety distance when you work on plug-in cabinet with a small refrigerant chart. Uh, the recovery machine has to be suitable for hydrocarbons, etc. You have to have a fire extinguisher. And this is very important. The technician has received training and been assessed in safe handling of the FC refrigerants. This is also the request of practically all the producers of cabinets. If you look, and you have to look before make service on the uh, manual, service manual, of the uh, appliances of the cabinet, uh, surely you will see that the request is that only qualified technicians are authorized to work on this type of cabinets. And then adopting all these, one for flammability, the other one for our filling uh, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the vessel, etc. when you are all in green area, you can start your activity. So this is the preliminary fundamental action before to start uh, any job, uh, invasive job on the uh, flammable cabinet. Another important point, that is the first point that is checked by authority 
if an accident happened, but it's not this the reason. Uh, the main reason is for knowledge. An important point is to be aware uh, of the uh, uh, safety data sheet of the refrigerant that you are using. So uh, uh, the supplier of the refrigerant has to provide you or you download uh, from uh, uh, the, the website, you download the uh, safety data sheet of uh, the propane, for example, and you have to know what is written there before to start your activity. Uh, let me see uh, now the different, the various points that I said uh, in the, the general table at the beginning with some details. I think still I have time. The area, the area we said has to be well ventilated. If natural ventilation is not sufficient, uh, we recommend in any case to use uh, a uh, suitable fan uh, that has to be ATEX is uh, the European regulation for uh, fire protections has to be AX has to be approved for use in flammable atmosphere. Uh, uh, it's necessary to use a, a, a propane monitor detector propane. I said I speak about propane to, for speaking about uh, all the other refrigerants you have to use. Uh, an uh, R32 uh, uh, monitor or LHFO monitor detector <clears throat> uh, uh, and has to be placed uh, at a uh, low level because all these type of refrigerants are heavier than air. Only uh, uh, ammonia is, uh, uh, <clears throat> is going up and not down. Uh, uh, and you have to assure to have no source of ignition within three meters. You cannot, let me say, be sure to eliminate possible leakage and the formation of uh, uh, potential flammable atmosphere. You have to use the monitor in order to understand in which condition is the ambient. You have to use fun in order to dissipate the uh, uh, concentration. And you have to have a fire extinguisher uh, available. And mainly, be sure, have no source of ignition within three meters. And to eliminate the possibility of static uh, shock, static discharge, to dress the uh, uh, earth uh, every, uh, that uh, we show before. <clears throat> there are, uh, when you do, invasive work, already I said, you have to put the monitor and has to be suitable for flammable refrigerants. The fire extinguisher has to be dry power type or CO2 type. And also for transportation is mandatory. And I think uh, in, in all the countries, I think not only for the uh, idea is an international agreement for transportation on, uh, on route. Uh, you need to use uh, uh, also when uh, you travel, when you transport flammable refrigerant, you have to have with you the uh, extinguisher, the same type of extinguisher. The vacuum, uh, several parts of the uh, uh, tools used for HFC, you can use also for uh, uh, flammable refrigerant, only part. Uh, uh, for example, uh, manifold uh, set, uh, if it's uh, it not electric, if it's analogic, huh? the, uh, uh, the electronic uh, uh, has to be approved for the uh, uh, flammable refrigerant. The, normally, the vacuum pump uh, as a source of ignition, they have only the switch on off uh, uh, switch and uh, so you can use, you have to close uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the switch outside, out uh, of the flammable, uh, as we say, three meter out of the danger of the potential dangerous location and uh, uh, plug uh, in, in a plug three meter away. In this way, you can use even the standard uh, uh, vacuum pump. 
in order to avoid uh, that for destruction for some reason you forget uh, to do this procedure is better to use uh, a uh, vacuum pump specific for hydrocarbon flammable refrigerants. Uh, the discharge of the pump uh, normally is not dangerous because the quantity is very small and you are working in a very well ventilated uh, uh, area. <clears throat> the recovery machine is different. They have uh, several switches and uh, uh, cannot be used a standard one has to be used a specific one for uh, a flammable refrigerant. Uh, um, and uh, there are a few companies that produce this type of recovery machine. However, they are available and uh, it has to be checked that they are rated for using with the flammable refrigerants, uh, A2L or uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, the same for the leak detector, has to be for flammable refrigerants. It's not possible to use the HFC or others first uh, because they are more sensitive to hydrocarbons, for example, and they are dangerous because they can be so, so emission. <clears throat> uh, um, for recovering the refrigerants, uh, has to be done particular care for the safety uh, let me say safety for flammability, as I said before. Another point to consider is that uh, uh, is when you fill the recovery cylinder, you have to fill inside no more than 45% of the HFC that that cylinder can contain. This is due to the different density of the, uh, uh, HF, uh, the hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, uh, the refrigerant charge, we said before, is more or less 40-45% uh, uh, than the quantity that you use uh, to charge in a system with HFC. The same for vessel. This is an important, uh, 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 this is an important point to take attention to avoid the explosion of the vessel. Uh, has to be filled 45% of the quantity of normally of the uh, uh, HFC. The best thing is to use the, the, the specific uh, uh, cylinder vessel, recovery vessel for hydrocarbon and charge according to the indication of the uh, vessel. <clears throat> Brazing is another uh, delicate, let me say, uh, is another operation where particular tension has to be done in order to work uh, safety. Uh, and again, to monitor, have a good ventilation, this uh, always. And uh, you have to be sure that you recover all the refrigerant from the entire machines. Uh, uh, I was called, uh, uh, now it's uh, three years ago, uh, in a repairing center where it has uh, only uh, the uh, uh, low side uh, has been, uh, uh, discharge from refrigerants uh, during the repairing. There was capillary plug and uh, nothing happened, only, let me say, some, <laughs> some uh, uh, not panic, but something similar, because uh, the, 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 uh, 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 the dryer, when they went to, to, uh, to brace, uh, to debrace, there was still a feeder inside and it makes uh, a, 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 like an explosion. Uh, uh, nothing happened, however, it was a dangerous uh, situation. So it's very important to be sure that you open completely the system and every part is free from refrigerants, mainly if they are hydrocarbons. So for this reason, it's, it's recommended to uh, cut the uh, system and work on low and high side for recovering the uh, and the uh, and after checking the uh, system. Uh, then you have to check with dry nitrogen that uh, uh, is free, is not blocked. Uh, uh, you can vent the refrigerants if it's small quantity of hydrocarbon, you cannot vent R32 or HFO. 
then when you are sure that uh, all the system is free from refrigerant, you can embrace the connection. Uh, and you have to switch on the torch only if your monitor say that uh, there are not uh, uh, the flammable uh, atmosphere condition. The preferable procedure, even if it's possible to do this, the flammable, the uh, preferable procedure is not to embrace uh, the connection, but cut with the, uh, with the cutter. <clears throat> Brazing, uh, 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 you, I will, brazing is less uh, critical than uh, embracing or the brazing. <clears throat> uh, is recommended uh, to have uh, circulation of dry nitrogen uh, inside the tubes, inside the system, when you brace the different point in order to avoid formation of oxidation inside. <clears throat> the evacuation, we said already, what to do with the vacuum pump. <clears throat> uh, the evacuation with hydrocarbons doesn't need a particular low uh, uh, higher vacuum than uh, HFC. Uh, however, if you work with isobutane, that uh, it has low pressure uh, both in the uh, discharge side, but mainly on the suction side, the eventual uh, residual air uh, so, uh, uh, is more critical for the proper working, for the proper performance of the cabinet. So with a 600 day vacuum should be uh, done with uh, uh, careful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Charging, uh, uh, charge uh, is important to use, uh, of course, uh, grade, uh, uh, hydrocarbons, uh, the system is with hydrocarbons, uh, no, don't use other type of, uh, uh, of propane, you have to use uh, refrigeration propane properly graded. <clears throat> uh, uh, taking all the care uh, of charging uh, that is done with the other refrigerants. An additional care to consider is that uh, uh, the charge uh, in the system normally, if you have a references to the, hydro, to the HFC, normally the uh, hydrocarbon, they have 45% and then HFC. And uh, some system, they have very small amount of charge inside, like 60 gram, uh, 80 grams. Uh, so the tolerances has to be uh, very, very small. Here, uh, the alternative spoke about 5% producers uh, or compressor, for example, they speak about the tolerances uh, of uh, 1% in the small uh, cabinet, the small uh, amount of refrigerant charge. Another element to consider when repairing is the electrical component, the electrical part. So uh, if, if it's necessary to replace uh, electrical components, uh, has to be replaced like for like. Don't change the type of components. Here there are the example of a uh, overload protector of hydrocarbon compressors versus an overload protector of HFC compressors. As you can see, this is open, and when uh, it, it trips, it generates spark. Uh, that is accessed uh, by outside. The hydrocarbon ones are sealed and uh, so it's not uh, a dangerous park uh, for the uh, ambient, even if you have air around a leakage of refrigerant. The same for the starting relay. The starting relay is not so evident, the differences. However, starting relay for hydrocarbon are different than the other, and you have to use the light for light. <clears throat> then uh, also is important not relocate the components, but place the components in the same position. If it is uh, a solenoid load uh, well, if it is thermostat and so, it's important to place in the same conditions, in the same positions before, because 
as we said before, who designed the cabinet, if it position a sparking element in a place, is because there, in that position, there are not the possibility that in case of leakage, there are the uh, potential explosive atmosphere. If you locate in another area, it can become dangerous. <clears throat> so I insisted a lot with uh, repairing because uh, uh, field experience has evidence that some accident uh, for uh, repairing the operation is happened. So I insist again, practical, not only theoret theoretical, but practical training have uh, a high uh, uh, prevention relevance. Uh, Marco already spoke about uh, the decertification and so, so I think that uh, I finish here my presentation and uh, thank you for your attention. And I am uh, available for the uh, uh, question if there are some questions. Thank you so much, uh, Marino, for this uh, great presentation. I think it is clear now that uh, the future can be a flame of refrigerant, but you now you can understand the issue uh, often in air conditioning field in, in Africa, we use to talk about the horsepower. We can say one horsepower, two horsepower, three horsepower air conditioners. So according to the volume of the room you have to cool down, you give a capacity of, uh, in terms of power. Now it's not enough to know about the power of yeah. cooling. You have to know also the volume is regarding to the quantity of refrigerant you have in the system you have to install. This is very important because in case of leakage, you cannot transform this area you are cooling to a small bomb. You know, as Marino presented to you, to have fire, you need three conditions. You need a refrigerant in this case, you need air, with and we need a spark. And you know, in Africa, air we have uh, has everywhere. The refrigerant, with uh, unfortunately the, 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 the tools we have using, we will have for sure uh, leakages. And the spark, you know, this is what we don't miss in Africa. Or your electricity interruption, or your smoker. Or you have some device at home who produce spike every time you can want to turn it on. So the one we are missing is the refrigerant. And here we have system with hydrocarbon. It means you are using something like butane you are using for cooking. So yep. if we don't pay attention, we use only uh, to say. <laughs> Horsepower air conditioner, two horsepower air conditioner, three horsepower air conditioner. But we don't know about the volume of the, the room you have to cool down. Or we don't know information about the quantity of flammable refrigerant in your external units. And you have to make a calculation to know that in case of leakage, this space is not uh, explosible. So you are. Causing very, very, very uh, I can't, I can't tell you, for example, to your, yeah. to, your, to, your, to your customer, is not, you will not be sure you will be able to turn back your client to ask back your money. So be aware about that because there are two levels of uh, uh, safety safety from the technician. So you have to be aware on, on that and know how to manage it. And safety also to the hand user. And the hand user have to be informed also about this uh, danger. Uh, anyway, uh, at the end, I will tell you, we have Utria, we are preparing even an open letter to share with everyone. This is an open letter addressing to a four players. First, to the technician, to be aware about uh, the safety issue of the flammable refrigerant. The second, to our leaders, to our decision makers, to know that in Africa, 
we are introducing a flammable refrigeration and air conditioning because they already happen in different countries and nothing is happened because there is no rules in the African countries. And this is a big issue. This is a big issue. So we have to start to see what kind of rule we have to put in. Of course, Ukraine is here as a group of experts to share their awareness about this. The test level is from equipment manufacturers. You cannot believe you are producing the equipment with flammable refrigerant, introducing this to the continent and country where there is not a law without any training. And you will say it's like prepare a bomb and to give it to a, a children. After when there is an explosion, you will say it's a, it's a fault of a children. No, the children are not allowed to manage bombs. So if you have to introduce flammable refrigerant in African market because it's the only market in the world where it is not the rules, you have at the end of the day to train all technicians who have to use it. You have to be aware. And the fourth level, we want to talk to the international institution. We we'll talk about Climate, we talk about climate change. We believe we are in the same world. We want a safe world for everyone and for the future. But we cannot continue experiencing everything in the hand of Africans. If we have to use money, if you have to produce equipment somewhere to test it in Africa, you have also to put African, all African in the condition to use it as safely. So this open letter will be for everyone. Of course, we are open as Africans to collaborate with everyone, but we are also aware that too much is too much. We are almost in Africa, equipment with R219. Very few Africans know about that. We are a lot of equipment with R600. Yeah. Yeah. Six, uh, Very few Africans know a lot of incidents. We had incidents in, in, in many countries in Africa. And Probably while we are making this webinar, somebody is not here, he's making some activity where there is a hydrocarbon there. We have to stop. Of course, we as a technician, a group of a technician, we are working to raise the awareness among technicians. This is what we have to do. We have also to speak louder than our, than our leaders. Decision maker will understand and hear and understand that refrigeration is very important to develop the continent. But meanwhile, we have to pay attention in this one because the air conditioning, we, we may use it, uh, cooling equipment in Africa because we took refrigeration as a luxury. And only very few people can use luxury equipment as air conditioning. And if we don't pay attention, the, 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 people, the rich people will start to export in their house because of this kind of equipment. So the own safety first. So we have to take it in church. We cannot think refrigeration is a, is a problem in Africa. It must be a solution. And we are working to make it really to be a solution. But meanwhile, when we are introducing flammable refrigerant in Africa, it can be a problem. And definitely they will say, oh, this refrigeration is not a solution for us because it is causing fire everywhere. We have to make uh -huh. this between refrigeration and air conditioning. Air conditioning and refrigeration is two part of refrigeration, but we have to work both is useful because in Africa today and right now in Burkina Faso, it's rain every rainy day, but the temperature is more than 30 degrees. Yesterday we were about 40, 42, 45 degrees. So we cannot say air conditioning is a luxury in this uh, part of, of, uh, of the world. It's a necessity for human beings, if you want to have a long life, to have the expectation to live more than 60 years, you need air conditioning. But also air conditioning cannot be a problem because of explosion, because of fires. So all technicians here, you are aware about that. This webinar is not enough, but we have just to start to raise the awareness, to let everybody know, because webinar is not, is not enough. You have to touch, you are a technician, you have to touch you have to make a field test to understand how to use all this machine you are seeing in picture and in, in video, but you never manage it. You need to manage it and to understand how to use it. This is how, what, uh, how it here Marino Basti shared with us. We thank him very, very, very much for this uh, kind presentation. I will pass uh, the floor now 
to our friend from Turkey, Mr. Kevans, we of course will share another technology, uh, another refrigerant in then new techni technology. We also uh, add a technician, uh, add a issue, safety issue again, between flammable refrigerant has R219, R32, and CO2, I mean carbon dioxide, we are of course more air conditioner with R219 in, the country, in, in Africa. But nevertheless, in North Africa, and the South Africa too, we have some application, we have some application with CO, CO2, I mean carbon dioxide. So, Kevin, we have a presentation for us on carbon dioxide. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madhya. And um, I'm sharing with my screen right now. I think it's okay, right? Yes. Okay. It's in presentation mode. Okay, great. Okay. Hey, Go everyone. Ahead. Uh, today is my pleasure. I'm proud on to be a participant for this activity. So for this opportunity also, thank you for providers. And today what we will talk about, about the CO2, how it's using in refrigeration and the main features and what's the safety rules. Just I will give some short introduction. Previously, my name is Kvanch. I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm working for refrigeration more than 21 years. And also I have experience in my business in 24 years for the, as an engineer. So also I'm working with CO2 and more than 17 years and married and two, two kids. Today, what we speak about the history of the CO2 applications, some main features, safety, legal obligations, and work area, evacuation, charging, and some system types, and the market availability. And also, if we need some specific equipment, of course, for the sustainable system, we have to consider the system performances. Historically, the CO2 is the first refrigerant using for refrigeration. And uh, also it start in 18th century. And of course, after the HFC is improvement, uh, it's a little stopped. And then it's begin in the earlier millennium. Uh, it will start it. And what's the some safety aspect with CO2? In normally, in atmosphere, we have CO2 is approximately 370 ppm. And, but if it's increasing, for instance, instead of the 2% of the air, so it will start to dangerous for our healthy. I, I don't like to say dangerous, but oh, of course, I say it's not, uh, let's say, uh, we have to consider to really a uh, clean atmosphere during the, our working. And also after that, uh, some steps, as you see for 3%, increasing our breathing rate in uh, nearly two times. And after 10%, uh, it will start for the, some cramps. And also, and the 18 or 70% is the, uh, the most dangerous points. As a properties, normally in refrigeration system with Freon, we're working in the um, subcritical site in the uh, HP diagram, but in CO2, we have to use also transcritical site. So as you see, what's the main differences? Only in 20 degree, CO2 pressure is 56 bar. So nearly two times a regular freon system is the 
what is the main point of the CO2 cycle different from the others? We have a chart. As you see, we have salt uh, liquid and vapor side, and we have also maybe you're seeing the first time is a supercritical phase. So as you see, with CO2, we can work in uh, minus 56 degree between plus 31 degree. Below this point, CO2 can be solid. And after this point, CO2 can be supercritical phase and supercritical phase, we never want to make it because we have no idea how we can control it. Is a kind of, uh, let's say not fluid, not solid and not vapor. So it's very different uh, part of the C CO2 and we don't want to catch this point. So one of the CO2 difference from the others is we have very limited area to work it. And of course, the most important thing is after that 31 degree, CO2 can be supercritical phase. So we have to use some maybe spare parts. We will see. For main features is the GVP is one. That meaning is very uh, climate friends and is uh, also O ODP is only zero, so it's a natural gas. That's why for the future, we should consider use CO2 systems. And the critical temperature is 31 degree. And one of the very important point why we insist on use a CO2 system, the volumetric cooling capacity is more than five times better than freons. So that meaning is we can provide the same refrigeration capacity with very less amount of the CO2. On the other hand, CO2 system has high operation pressures and also high discharge temperature. Operation pressure is for transcritical system is typically working in the 90 bars for the discharge line. And the cascade system also for the subcritical, uh, subcritical phase is also working 35 bar. Is the one of the very higher than the uh, regular freon systems. So according to these rules and according to very high operation pressure. We have to consider about uh, uh, pipe thickness. We need to more. Also control equipment settings is one of the important point because it's very active refrigerant. And also we, another thing is we have to use tools, use to access the system. So is the special one for the high pressure and special one equipment for CO2 systems. Typical pressures is we have also some pressure relief valve as one of the important uh, equipments for the CO2 systems about safety. We have some different points, different pressures according to some different part of the system, we have to use some different set it pressure relief valve. So it start from the 120 bars until the 40 bars. Also for the compressor side, compressor manufacturer use the 170 bars special pressure relief valve on the body of the compressor. So Typical pressure for the also cascade system for the sub, uh, the second circle of the system in cascade also we are working between 15 bars 
till the 40 bars. So we, when we go to the operation pressure, as you see, what's the main difference from the some freons and also one of the flammable refrigerants, R32, uh, is very, let's say, closer freon on 32 pressures. But when we come to the same conditions, for instance, approximately 30 degree with the CO2, as you see, you can reach easily 70 bars. But in same conditions, freon is only approximately 15 bars. Uh, sorry, uh, R22 is only 15 bars. And 404A is nearly maybe 14 bars. So it's very different from the other refrigerant CO2 working conditions. I'm repeat a couple of times this because today we want to insist on the safety issue is the most important point for our operations. There is some different system types. I don't want to stay too, too long time, but just I want to show it is the pump system, is the CO2 is using in the secondary side as a cascade in the liquid phase to provide uh, cool. Also for the heat exchangers and the liquid tank also, it can uh, going in the gas phase, vapor phase. And the other stage is it can be uh, freon generally to provide the gas cooling of the CO2. And also, what is the main difference from the this system? The regular refrigeration system is a is not a simple Carnot cycle, of course. Also, this system is used for ammonia, so it's very old applications. But still, also you can see, uh, in, still it's working because CO2 system is also very stable and very strong. So that meaning is also provide the long life, long system life. The other system is another uh, system for cascade, but CO2 also using in liquid phase with the expansion valve, and also it can be used for the compressor for is a D, DX system, direct expansion system, not for the pump. So also for the second system, it can be also for one OA just to provide to CO2 is make cooling and not go above to critical point. And uh, one of the popular transcritical system, as you see here, the main difference from the other Carnot cycle, we should use two regulation valve. One of them is provide to stable pressure for the liquid after gas cooler or gas uh, pressure. And uh, one of the regulation valve is provide between compressor and liquid tank just to balance for the gas. If any case, CO2 pressure is improving, then this, those regulation valves manage to the system pressure. During the working, generally, CO2 system uh, working properly is not a problem. But if the system stop, and if the outside temperature is improving, increasing, and then according to this, CO2 pressure start to be increased suddenly. So we have to balance uh, with some special regulation valves. And we called condenser in CO2 system is gas cooler because it's not possible to provide only liquid as condenser for CO2 system. That's why also we use a special regulation valve provide for the staple system pressure. Okay, there is some special things. And the other system is the booster. Booster meaning is we are using the common gas cooler, but different 
uh, two different system circle. One of them is provide the minus 10 evaporation. The other is minus 35 with two circle using the common gas cooler. And the other is we also use ejector system is the quite new. We will see the, how it's working. As you see, ejector is a devices to manage for the CO2 working for the system. On, but the main feature of the uh, why we want to use the, this ejector system because ejector also can allow us. The CO2 system can work outside temperature until approximately 47 Celsius and is very effective. So there is three generation of the CO2 system until uh, right now we use. One of them is the booster, is the standard system, the common gas cooler for uh, the other. And also we can use a parallel compressor system. We can just add one compressor. It's also suitable for the cold climates. You don't need to work uh, all the compressor very hard. So the parallel compressor is provide the system uh, efficiency increasing and also multi-ejector solution uh, can allow to us the higher outside temperature working with CO2 without any uh, dangerous things. If we can compare for the performances with CO2, it's 404A. For instance, according to this table, as you see, 404A uh, COP can see higher, but when we come to the real life, if we can use the multi-ejector system with parallel compression, you can see the table. Some different uh, city from the uh, uh, vault and uh, this is the compression with the CO2, some different CO2 system performances with 404A. As you see, even in some countries, we, by the way, we are accepting the 404A performances is 10%, sorry, 100% uh, is the, let's say the R, uh, the points, but as you see, nearly for the old system with the newest generation parallel uh, plus ejector system, performances is higher than the 404A. So that meaning is we need to less energy so we can provide the energy consumption is the one of the important point for our future and one of the important point for also a climate change factor, because we don't want to create more uh, carbon footprints. Okay, why CO2 is efficient compared for the regular Freon direct expansion system, low pressure drop, also CO2 can provide a good heat transfer. This is one of the important points. Instead of the, uh, throw our heat to the atmosphere, we can use for our system. Uh, even in the winter time, it's uh, really, really effective. And also that's why the heat recovery potential important and good heat transfer provide for us the small diameter of the pipes, less amount of the refrigerant and smaller heat exchanger volume because it's very, very effective, uh, more than five times according to 404A. And I want to insist, uh, uh, I want to also say some uh, safety rules also. Pressure relief valve is one of the important point for us because uh, we have to uh, use some pressure relief valve in different uh, point of the system just to provide, just to provide uh, any case of the, if the pressure is 
uh, increasing, so we don't want to be create a mess. Generally, there is no problem until right now all around the world in the CO2 applications, uh, but also CO2 system use the pressure relief valve, but this also another point, uh, it can be create some leakage point from the R system, but CO2 is already the, let's say the natural friendly. So we don't want to uh, gas recovery from the system and it is not necessary, but also we have to consider uh, each point can be uh, also risk for the leakage. And we have to use some specific, uh, some specific equipments. Specific meaning is the equipment can use for the higher pressure as manifold sets, connections, hoses is very important. And during the replacement of the components also, we have to consider firstly, we should balance to the all system sites because uh, if one site pressure is higher than the others and very high during the replacement or during the changing of the materials the high pressure can be a big problem that's why also we have to use some specific equipment and some trainings also we are learning how we can use it Also, there is some specific uh, legal applications according to different countries. And also we are using the EN 378 as a uh, standards because also it's including the CO2, but uh, also PAD pressure equipment directive, very important. We have to use also, we should consider when we select to the system components, this is the both standards. CO2 is safety group is A1, is non-flammable, lower toxicity, not as ammonia, is only if the CO2 volume is too high, then it's become a dangerous. And also, we can understand the, some uh, CO2 alarm detector is very easy, but CO2 has high pressures. And a uh, very important point is, I want to also say here, very high noise level during the leakage. Why it's very important? Because when the people uh, here, the sound, it's create a panic. That's why it's very important point. And we have to use some uh, specific things. For instance, for the leakage, CO2 pressure, if go to uh, below the five bars, is become suddenly, is a solid phase, as you see. So we don't want to solid phase in our refrigeration system because we are working with liquid and vapor and the solid is not a phase we don't want to see in our system. That's why also we have to uh, take some special pro pro protection equipment if it's become. And for the working area also, uh, personally should use some specific alarm detectors. Also, there is some different level of the uh, alarm uh, according to how many PPM CO2 in our working area. This equipment also become more important for the bigger capacity of the system. Bigger capacity meaning is bigger volume of the refrigerant we have. Evacuation, the other thing is 
of course, we don't want to any moisture or uh, say wet air or water in our system. But in CO2 system is very important because if CO2 and moisture can stay in system, it's create a carbonic acid. And the acidic effect also very, very dangerous for the, our pipelines. So it will create uh, a leakage. So that's why we never want to see any moisture in our system for the CO2 uh, cycles as the others. For the charging also, uh, again, we have, uh, especially for the charging side, I can say, the CO2 cylinder, we should be very careful during the carry out the CO2. And we have to use some safety belts for the CO2 cylinder. Just any case of is any leakage, it can be moved. That's why. So our technicians should be used all safety equipments. And the other point is, CO2 pressure in the CO2 bottle can increase every one Celsius, every one Celsius ambient temperature increase, temper pressure increasing in the bottle of CO2. So just think about uh, if the outside temperature is 10% increasing, before we start for the uh, CO2 bottles, in a, if we can forget the outside CO2, only 10, 10 degrees Celsius increasing creates a 100 bar increasing of the CO2 bottles. Okay, maximum charge size also can be changed according to system. And for the refrigerant leak, of course, is the high pressure meaning is the high leak potential. And uh, we don't want to use also generally mo multiple joints, but we have to use a large system too much because we are also using the pressure relief valve as some example. And also has very small molecule size. That's why also leak potential is high. And uh, we are doing some uh, risk, risk assessment, also hazards analysis before using the CO2 systems. As also previous presentation, Mr. Basi also show us, also we have used. And leak detection, generally also we can understand from the uh, sounds, but for the some small size leak detection also, we can use uh, some detectors, also some uh, leak detection spray, also we can find from the market. Okay. For the refrigerant leaks, uh, I also told we don't want to uh, recover because CO2 is already climate friends and also the price of the CO2 is not, uh, let's say the cost is very low according to uh, freons or the other refrigerants. For instance, this is for the refrigeration cost. Of course, it is for Turkey is my country, but as you see, CO2 is the lowest cost according to others. And market availability. Refrigerant is, we can find, knowledge is improving, but also muddy told is the according to, let's say, uh, some places of the world also, uh, it is still increasing to knowledge. And that's why we need some skills uh, and also trainings, but the trainings also available. 
but the most important thing is safety. So we always start the trainings with safety uh, conditions and components is right now is available. Tool so equipment is already available. Thank you so much. This is my presentation, what we have today. And any kind of questions, I am ready to receive them. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Evans, for this great presentation. As you can see here, we have talking about technology, not a technology uh, that you can find everywhere in Africa. Some of you probably is the first time you see talking about a vector or about uh, all this kind of equipment, but it's existing already existing in some part of the world, in Europe, in some country in Africa, and in other parts of the world. Of course, uh, is a, a particular, this one is a particular refrigerant because we have a, a issue on, on the pressure. And we have to remember also the critical point is uh, 31 degree, as you know, here 31 uh, is not uh, our temperature, but we can have some application, some particular application where you can uh, see uh, CO2. So you have to be aware about all the uh, basic issues related to uh, safety. So uh, before uh, pass the floor to my colleague Marco. I will start with the, the, the pool. Yeah, we have a pool where I will share it with you. I will send to all of you a pool and with very few questions. I would like you to uh, say something about that. What uh, have you ever received any training in, uh, in this sector before this webinar? We want to know if yes, also which uh, refrigerant did you use uh, as a flammable refrigerant? This is very important for us to know how many uh, of us or technicians around the continent are already used flammable refrigerant if they receive training. So this is the, the poll I'm sending to you. I'm just asking to you to, 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 to replay it off Every single question, please, I, I ask, of course, to translate because of this one is only in, in, in English. And uh, who is uh, interpreting, uh, making the translation, supposed to answer, uh, to explain the questions, and then you can answer. OK, have you ever used a flammable refrigerant during servicing? Uh, Avez-vous déjà utilisé, uh, bien sûr, le refrigérant inflammable? Si oui, vous cliquez sur yes. Sinon, vous cliquez sur non. Et si oui, c'est lequel de ces réfrigérants? Il y a une liste, donc vous cliquez sur lequel vous avez déjà utilisé. Et ainsi de suite. Avez-vous participé à une formation sur les réfrigérants inflammables avant, cette, euh, avant ce webinaire? Si oui, et vous cliquez sur oui. Sinon, vous cliquez aussi sur non. Voilà un peu, c'est juste des simples questions pour nous permettre de comprendre un certain nombre de choses par rapport justement à la question du réfrigérant. Donc, pendant que vous êtes en train de voter, j'invite tout le monde, tous ceux qui participent, de, 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 de répondre à ce sondage. Je vais passer la, la parole à mon collègue Marc Bolli, qui a la main levée, certainement il a quelque chose à ajouter sur ça. Donc, please, every one of you, you have to, of course, Send your replay. You are, this pool is important. Know from you uh, this uh, information. Who have ever you have you ever used a flammable refrigerant during servicing or even during installation? Because if it's the first time you use an air conditioner, first time you say yes or not. And if you you ever you install refrigeration system, refrigeration equipment with flammable refrigerant, you can say which one. You can say, make a choice, multi-choice here. If you use different refrigerant, you can type on different refrigerant and also other refrigerant, you can do it so. And the other one, last one, before this webinar, have you ever 
had a training on flammable refrigerant. This also is very important because we want to know a lot of information regarding flammable refrigerant in Africa. I expect everyone here to answer to these very few questions. Marco, the floor is yours. Why they continue? I go ahead. Only 40% of the attendee has responding now. Only 40%, only 30%, 45%. is very few. Everyone participating in this webinar in Africa have to uh, participate to this census, please. Translate in, in different language, in French, in Arabic, in Portuguese, please, please, please. It's very important to know about that. Meanwhile, Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I want to thank my teachers, Marino and Kivanj. Great job, as usual. All the 100 participants that are now on the floor, please give, uh, send us your questions. We are in an historic moment. We are here for you. We can answer your question. Also, my friend Jose from APRAC, thank you so much. We are a consortium of 30 training centers. In Europe, we are moving fast on alternative refrigerants, maybe too fast, maybe. We, we don't know yet. Uh, we know about split systems. We are going to add soon in Europe R290. We are not competent enough yet, but we are moving to that. So please do your questions because we are in a historic moment today. I say it again, Africa and Europe together. I think it never happened to continents together in a webinar to help each other so strongly. And we speak all your languages, maybe not all of the languages, but we can help you with your languages. So we can have a very fruitful um, work together. So we are here for you. Please send you your, uh, your questions. I would like to tell you one more thing. Thanks again to my teachers. We have done a lot of training, 300 training every year. Kivanch has been in Italy recently for an important manufacturers. Marino is always doing a very important training on hydrocarbons for many manufacturers. So we have here two international experts. Take the most from them. Okay, thank you, Marco. Please go ahead with this census. We have only 39 attendees who reply to this, uh, will participate. Only 54% of you are uh, participating to this, uh, uh, this poll. Why everyone, everyone is very important. I want to reach 80 percent minimum 80 percent go ahead everyone we have to replay we have to replay everyone even uh, uh the board i know you know about that but we have to, to replace this is an important census to know exactly where we we are it's very important for us to know with data not only to say we are not able or we are not allowed to or we are not equipment we i know we have a lot of issues in africa we know is not only get training but also to get the equipment because the equipment we have in, in tools for managing this refrigerant is not affordable for us is not even available and which can who can buy it have to buy it from Europe or for uh, America or some other countries and of course we have a lot of issue to import these tools in our countries because refrigeration is taken as a luxury so you have to pay a lot of taxes to bring it in the country we have to show all this issue we know that the international institutions are helping a lot of countries by training by with a few tools but the tools they are giving, is, as you know, is not enough for all technicians in the country in Africa. So uh, we have to have a national regulation, allow technicians to buy the tools by themselves because the technician uh, company, if your company is working properly, if the rules of national level is uh, uh, um, help, can help you to buy the tools by yourself, 
I'm sure uh, you will work properly. You will have your correct balance for charging. How many technicians in our in Africa are rebalanced? Very few, because the balance is what not know. And uh, the scale, I mean, because the scale, we, many people, we don't use scale. But if you want to charge flammable refrigerant, you need scale. Or how can you know how many grams you are putting in the system? You cannot charge in looking at the job. You have to put your, uh, your cylinder on the scale and to see how many grams you are putting in the system. And to do that, you have to have the tools. As if you don't have the tool, you have to buy it. As if you cannot buy, it, buy the equipment, of course, you will work as usual without equipment and in, 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 in a safe way. And this is very important. And we have to share all this information to our leaders to know about that. And of course, to help technicians. We cannot ask everyone to, be, to buy, uh, take uh, tools and to have institution to give all technicians around the continent because we have a lot of uh, a company. We have a lot of technicians. But Nadi, if can I ask, answer the a question? The law does can help continue to technician to buy by themselves, of course, they could, they, they, the tools will be available in the country and will be cheaper, and then people can be able to buy it. So it's very important to share all the information here. We are only at 60, 59% of the participants are responding in this census. I have to close because we have to start the, the question time. Uh, Ali, we... I have um, about what you're saying about recovery yeah. machine, for example, was a very interesting question from yeah. Ali Dombia asking yeah. how to make important recovery the refrigerant politically also is very important because um, recovery the refrigerant is not only a must for the environment, but also economically should be important. It will make made value of the refrigerant, make it valuable. Refrigerant is costly. Is very costly, so it's not just only for environment that you have to recover it, but also for the money, for the economic part. Because if you recover it, you can use it in the same system, or you can use it in a, uh, in a similar system, and so you save money. So if you make it economically, you recover it, and you have to make increase the knowledge, uh, in, uh, the awareness of this important issue. Recovery the refrigerant to make it money. Thank you, Marco. Now I will let the census go on because I want really everybody to participate to the census. So I will uh, I will continue uh, to hear from our colleagues who are following the Zoom platform for the questions because the question time from uh, Rauda first. If she has some question and uh, from Zoom and Facebook in French or in Arabic. To share with her, we will try, of course, to give an answer. And after, we will be back uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Sami, who is following the same activity on Zoom, and then Yama. Rauda, please open your microphone and place three questions by time because we have to, at the end of the day, we have just one half an hour remaining, but we will manage. Uh, this half an hour to be exhausted. Go ahead. Bonsoir à tous les amis de tous les, les pays du monde. Euh, voilà, on a une présence très honorable aujourd'hui. Il y a plusieurs questions sur Zoom. Euh, la première question, euh, bon, ce sont des questions de, de Ali euh, Bombia. Quelle politique a mené pour obtenir les équipements de récupération des fumées de frigorigène? Il pose la question des politiques. La deuxième question, quelles solutions pour intensifier la sensibilisation dans le secteur? Une autre question de Babar Kembao. Comment faire pour participer à la formation des bonnes pratiques des réfrigérants inflammables présentés par M. Marino Bassi? Uh, as is in French, I will continue, I will replay in French. Uh, somebody who had to translate uh, in English channel, probably sideways, uh, translate, or I can continue in English, so don't mix this thing. So as I understand what, uh, what is the question from Rauda, I will try to replay directly. So uh, what politics we have to do? We have to raise the awareness. 
Okay, we have to raise the awareness to let our decision makers, because we as an association, we as a technician, we cannot decide everything. We have to share our awareness with um, the, the leaders, the decision makers at a national level. This is what I'm talking about. We have to know that is very important because, for example, when we talk about climate change, we, we have to make a rule that allow technicians to have the devices, the equipment cheaper in the country. And to make it, we have to have a, a law, for example, to, detaxi, to take away the taxes on the, the importation of, for example, for equipment. For example, I make a study, a study some years ago, many years ago on, uh, in, on, um, in sub-Saharan country. The refrigeration sector is, a, is taken as a luxury. And then depending on the country, you have a taxi starting from 40 to 65%. So if you buy an equipment in Europe or in Western country, you have to bring it, it is not cheaper, and you have to pay 40 to 65% of taxes. You can, you can understand that it's not affordable for the technician, the company to, to buy it in Africa. In the other way, the second question is, among us technician, we need to be more, mobili more mobilization at national levels, as you remember, U3 is a union of national associations. So that means in a national level, you have, for example, Mali is a good example. You are working very well. You are mobilizing a lot of people in Mali. But this, this activity have to be done in different countries, in everywhere. All in Africa have to be in this activity. For example, sooner we will have World Refrigeration Day. World Refrigeration Day is an important day for awareness. To let people know, to let our leaders know that refrigeration is important. What is a refrigeration? It's not a luxury. Refrigeration doesn't mean air conditioner. Refrigeration means some other things that not except only air conditioner. But we have to raise the awareness to let them know what is it, and then we can solve this uh, question. About the technology, of course, we are working. We are working to make it, you are seeing in our different, uh, as you are about uh, in our goals, in our objective, is to make all technology if, uh, available to share the experiences in, in Africa. But this can happen only if all technicians are together. And we are working together in the same way, in the same vision, in the same volunteer to participate to whatever activity. Lot of technicians are asking, what can Maasai win being with you? in national level. You are winning a, tra a training here for free. This training, if I want to evaluate it in money, is a lot of thousand of local money, okay? Is it, I can tell in, in dollars, if you don't spend two to three thousand dollars, you cannot have a training like this, but you get it for free. So you have to participate more to a law house to, to, uh, to collaborate, even in national level. You have to do that. Because this is a union of national association. If you don't support your national association, you don't support Utria. Because Utria is, is a part, a visible part of the tree. The roots are the national association where you have to work there. Because if you want a big tree, you have to work on the roots. And the root is close to you, is the, your national association. All of you here, have you worked properly in your national association? Are you active in your national association? Do you know that in your country is your national association? A national association. If there is not a national association, you have to work hardly to create a national association and, of course, to continue to work with your trial. Thank you, Rauda, for this pre question. Um, let's go to Sami and back. We will back to Yama also, who have questions from English speaking countries. Yeah, Sami. Some question from. Uh, oui. Yeah. Allez-y. Bon après-midi. Oui. Bon après-midi à tous. Oui, sur Facebook, nous n'avons pas de euh, demandes, juste des réactions d'encouragement. Merci. Et, OK. Donc, il y a Ben, we go to, to Yama. Yama, are you here? Yama is supposed to, to check on, on Zoom. I hope she is still connected because uh, 
is a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah ma. She's not on connected right now. So let's uh, go directly, write some question and answer, and we can see. Yes, I'm here. Uh, maybe I was speaking and the mic was uh, 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 being muted. So on the ah, platform, okay. yes, okay, on, so. on, the, on the Zoom platform, there are a lot of questions, but they are in French. And I try uh, translating few, but yeah. I think. Uh, you have yeah, to take the one. We have to take the one in in in, in English only because in yeah, French, uh, Rauda who is talking about that. Okay, no. Then for yeah, English, only uh, English I question. See, I don't see any question in English besides appreciation for the the, the webinar and uh, the request that the webinar be made or the recorded webinar be made available. So that is all that I have for English. Okay. Thank 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 you so much then. So whoever is caring about Facebook in, in English is supposed to be Joe. Joe Joseph Rogut, are you still online? Are you checking on Facebook, please? Can you come with, uh, with questions? No, it seems Joseph is not only more. Joseph, are you here? Yeah, he's here. Your microphone is on. OK, Joseph, yes. any questions on Facebook, please? Good evening. Also, the English pages. No, uh, we don't have the questions on Facebook, but mm -hmm. the ones have, on Facebook have been answered by uh, Sami and uh, in French. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So, uh, let, uh, Rauda has. Let's hear from Rauda, and then we will uh, take some question from the attendee here. Uh, Rauda. Oui, Madi, il y a plusieurs, il y a certaines questions techniques qui sont importantes. Je pense oui. qu'on doit les répondre. Oui. Euh, la première question est euh, en ce qui concerne la, la reconversion de fluide mm -hmm. inflammable au fluide ininflammable et euh, vice versa. Est-ce qu'elle est possible et quels sont les gains et, euh, et si oui, quels sont les composants qu'on doit les, les remplacer? C'est la première question. Une deuxième mm -hmm. question. Euh, monsieur Adam Hichini, euh, il a posé, est-ce que vous pouvez euh, nous parler de ratio de compression? Ratio de compression. OK. Alors, on va répondre à la... À, je vais passer... Je peux les répondre, mais je passe à Marino, par exemple, pour les rétrophiles. Les rétrophiles, disons, les, la reconversion entre les deux réfrigérants L'inflammable et non inflammable, ça ne se fait pas sur le même équipement. Vous changez complètement d'équipement. Mais je vais laisser, bien sûr, euh, euh, le, 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 euh, le speaker, le formateur d'aujourd'hui, M. Marino Bassi, il va répondre à cette question. Je vais lui traduire ça directement parce que Marino a donné. Oui, oui. I understand, I understand, I understand the matter. Yes. I understand, okay, go ahead. Is it, is it, is it recommandable to make a, retro, a, 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 a retrofit? between flame-over refrigerant and non-flame-over refrigerant in the same system? Uh, uh, it's not recommended. It's not recommended. Flammable refrigerant should be used only on machine that has been designed for flammable refrigerant. It's possible the reconversion, but it's difficult. And uh, also is a matter of legal responsibility. Who is changing the refrigerant on a machine is considering important changes and the machine, it becomes like a new machines. And the builder of these machines uh, is not the original builder, but these, uh, the, the producers, is the technician that make these uh, uh, variations. Uh, and it takes all the responsibility in case of problem uh, uh, if the conversion, the reconversion has to be properly done. So the recommendation is, uh, 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 to avoid to do this type of reconversion on all machines. Changes of electrical components uh, uh, is difficult uh, uh, and make uh, the, the proper risk assessment uh, 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 is difficult and the recommendation is not to do this. Frankly speaking, I have to say that uh, uh, the first conversion, the first use of hydrocarbon on a system, a, a standard system, 
I, uh, uh, I found this conversion many years ago uh, uh, in Arabic countries uh, where uh, the use was still R12. It was difficult to find, expensive, difficult to find. And uh, the system, the refrigerators, also refrigerators, or let me say small freezers uh, uh, in uh, uh, some shops, uh, uh, the replacement uh, was uh, done instead of R12 using uh, a GPL. Uh, uh, the system was worked perfectly, but uh, it was a dangerous uh, operation to avoid to do. So uh, uh, to change the refrigerant on HFC uh, uh, with uh, hydrocarbons is a difficult operation. Several uh, 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 activities has to be done chain the electrical component, for example, but not only one, also the fan motors, because the fan motors uh, can be sparkling, not only the overall protector of the compressors. It's an operation that uh, uh, we recommend not to carry out. Thank you, Marino. I want to add it into this shot. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it because I know thermodynamically, Refrigerant R219 and R22 are similar, okay? But the issue is the flammability of R290. So if you take away the R22, you put R290 in the same system, in case of leakage, you are sure that you, have, you will have a fire there or an explosion. So you don't even have the equipment, you don't even have the tools to work properly on R219. Yep. Where, why have, will you make the, the transfer from R22 to R290? So in Africa, don't do it. I know as Marino said, in some country, there some international uh, institution, he's doing that. He's inviting technician to change the refrigerant R22 with R219. But but don't do it. It's oh. working in the paper, yes. It's working properly because the thermodynamic is, is the same. But in the field, you don't have the, the right equipment. We don't have the, the advice to do it. So don't take this risk. You say, oh. if somebody asks you in Africa, transfer a, 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 this refrigerator, oh. say, can't because I don't have the tools and awareness to do this. But if you uh, don't explosion while you are there, you create the condition to have an explosion after when you leave it to the scene. But, uh, so, uh, Ma yeah. Ma excuse me, Madi, yes. but this recommendation we do, uh, uh, not only, let me say, uh, in Africa, but in every country. In Europe, we do this uh, uh, no, recommendation. This, in this, Germany, this webinar, in Italy, is in, Africa, all, in all the countries. More of African technicians. Yeah, yeah. Don't do this type of, of operation, this uh, 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 retrofitting, let me say. Use uh, hydrocarbon only on machine designed for hydrocarbons. Yeah. Thank you, Marino. You know, in Europe, there is a rule. Nobody go, uh, do everyone respect the rules? Here in Africa, we don't have these rules. This is the issue. In Europe, you know, we don't have air conditioning with propane. Until today, nobody is selling air conditioning with propane. In Africa, more than five years, we are already using uh, air conditioning yeah. and we will see the, the exit poll of this a lot of them never had training except today it's senseless in Europe people are more training than in Africa and the one who are going to be in the field to make the operation is not the one who has studied most of the people who are participating in this training are well training but to stay in office they're not the one who is going to the field is never the technician in the field. And this is very different we have to do. We cannot say, you have to see, we can do it. But to go in the field, you send somebody away who, who are not a tool because you are not as a, 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 a owner of the activity. You are not able to, to, to buy the good equipment for your technician to go in the field. And even the technician don't have the, 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 the training to, to handle this refrigerant. So what you are doing, you are putting your technician in, in a difficult situation of, of course, of explosion, 
And if everything goes okay because he finished and he leave, of course, he left a, a, a potential bomb for the hand user. We have to be clear, not do it. Don't do it. Thank you, Marino. Uh, we have the hands up of, from uh, Mr. Landulsi. So we, I will ask to attend it now. We have, uh, uh, again, 15 minutes. Some who want to, to, to make a question, raise your hands up and in, I will give you the possibility to talk here and to make your question. Who want to talk how to raise his hand up? Okay, not in the video because we don't see you. You have to raise with your, 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 your device. We have a, a point where we can raise your hand and then we can see you and give you the floor. Uh, yes, Mr. Landulsi, we have your hands up. Mr. Landulsi, okay, you are an interpreter. So if I want to, you want to talk here, I will take you away. But unfortunately, okay, Yazid, you can continue with translation. Okay, just a moment, I will put, uh, I will change, Mr. Landulsi will be here with us. And in this case, only Mr. Yazid will be the one who will speak in Arabic. Landulsi, go ahead. Oui, c'est ma... Ma question, c'était ma question, mais ma, ma question de dire ne pas utiliser, c'est bien, mais malheureusement, il y a des gens qui, qui l'utilisent. Même, même, on a voulu faire des expériences. Si on change le circuit en détente directe, en détente indirecte avec un circuit secondaire, quelle est la perte au, au niveau de la capacité Une. De deux, si on peut l'utiliser, mais avec un circuit secondaire, avec un échange à la plaque, et le, 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 les hydrocarbures n'entrent pas dans la chambre, c'est juste à l'extérieur pour les, tout ce qui est commercial, pour les petites chambres froides. Parce que c'est une solution, on, si on utilise l'emplacement du condenseur à l'extérieur, loin des, 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 des emplacements d'explosion de, ou bien d'inflammation, est-ce qu'il est, qu est possible bon, de dire non, de ne pas utiliser Mais la réalité, ce n'est pas ça, parce que l'investissement, le coût d'investissement pour changer tout un circuit, ça coûte, ça coûte trop cher. Avec un hôtel qui a une dizaine de chambres froides, pour changer tous les équipements, ce n'est pas facile. Pas, moi, je, je pense, parce que ça, on change. C'est une, une idée. Ce n'est pas, pas, pas une solution. C'est de changer le circuit. Monsieur Landoul, c'est allez y Soyez synthétique, soyez synthétique. On ne va pas faire une discussion technique. Soyez synthétique parce qu'on a 15 minutes. On va passer la parole à d'autres personnes. Alors, je vais vous répondre tout simplement. En Europe, avec les chillers, les chillers existent déjà avec des propane, avec des quantités élevées. Mais chiller, c'est un appareil qui est fermé, qui a l'excédé, qui a été construit et fait dans l'usine. Donc, il n'y a pas ce risque-là. Mais quand on parle de nos techniciens, M. Landoulsi, nous sommes en Afrique, nous savons quel est l'outillage qu'ils ont. Et vous dites que ça coûte cher. La vie humaine, ça coûte, ça coûte combien? Humaine, elle, elle coûte plus cher qu'une machine ou bien c'est la machine qui coûte plus cher que la vie humaine? Voilà, il faut penser à ça. Si nous voulons être sincères, dites que ce sont des choses, le risque est plus élevé. Ce n'est pas que techniquement, ce n'est pas bon, mais on n'a pas les requis en Afrique pour utiliser ça. Il faut de la formation, il faut de l'outillage, il faut beaucoup de formation, beaucoup d'outillage, et bien sûr, pas seulement les techniciens, même au niveau de la famille, ils doivent le savoir. Ce n'est pas parce qu'ils n'ont pas chargé la quantité qu'il faut que ça ne peut pas prendre feu. Donc, il faut qu'ils sachent qu'il y a des réfrigérants qui sortent, qui peuvent prendre le feu dans la maison et qu'ils ne doivent pas aller là-bas à côté mettre la cuisine ou quelque chose comme ça. Donc, ce sont des, des choses, des foins d'incendie de, 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 à côté du climatiseur ou l'unité intérieure. Donc, il y a beaucoup de travail qui va être fait. Attention, M. Landoulsi, nous sommes des techniciens de bureau. Nous n'allons pas sur les chantiers, nous ne manipulons pas. Parlons à ceux qui vont Nous sommes en train de parler à ceux qui vont sur le terrain. C'est eux qui risquent leur vie et qui mettent la vie des citoyens en danger. Pas nous qui sommes dans le bureau. Moi, je suis un technicien du bureau. Je parle, je forme des gens dans le bureau. Mais je ne vais pas dire à quelqu'un d'aller faire ce travail-là parce que je sais qu'il n'a pas les compétences que j'ai. Il n'a pas le, le temps. Qui, et s'il met le temps qu'il doit mettre pour faire ça, il va passer la journée là-bas. Ça ne sera pas productif pour l'entreprise. Donc, il va travailler comme d'habitude. Il va rapidement mettre ça, regarder les balances. Il va mettre avec le manou tout ça. Après, moi, en tant que responsable d'entreprise, j'aurai à trouver un bon avocat pour dire que j'avais raison, c'est l'entreprise, c'est lui qui est mort qui a tort. Non, on ne va pas le faire tout simplement. On ne le fait pas et on est honnête avec nous-mêmes. Merci beaucoup. Et des mains levées. Sorry, I have to be straight and be in French directly with Landulsi to say something that we all must know. Most of us are technicians. We know we are talking here, but we are in the office. We are not in the field. In the field, we send somebody else. 
And with this guy, he had not well equipped the right tools, he had not the right training, so we cannot say go use it as usual. He will go there, he will not use the scale. He will fill the system and go away. We cannot do that. We at Africa in this level of the training on agrocarbon, you have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be clear, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. How many technicians have a scale in Africa? How many technicians have a scale? I didn't make the question. I supposed to make this question to know how many have, have a scale. I use it until the one who I say, yes, I already use agrocarbon. I would like to know from them if they use a the scale. So we have a hands up, 10 minutes left. Let's go right now to Mr. Faraday. Mr. Faraday, I will allow you to speak. Give me a second to, to promote you, then you will be able to speak. Mr. Faraday, you have to accept that I send you the possibility to speak and then you will be, you will be in the house. Mr. Faraday, open your microphone and you can talk. Mr. Faraday, are you here? Okay, you have to go speak. Uh, Miss Cynthia. Miss Cynthia so Suvo. Please activate your microphone. Your, your microphone is off. You have to put it on if you want to talk. Miss Cynthia Sovu. More no. No. Okay. Mr. Ale Njeji. Mr. Ale Njeji, the floor is yours. You have to, all who want to talk, have to activate the microphone now because I allow you to talk, but you, your microphone is switched off. So you have to open it by, by yourself. Okay. Mr. Ale. Hello. Hello. We are lazy, Mr. Ale. Hello. Oui, allez-y, on vous écoute. Bonsoir tout le monde. Euh, désolé, je suis sorti de mes bureaux. Je me suis retrouvé dans un Mais ça allait, allait rapidement. On n'a pas en le fait, temps. Euh, euh, directement à vos questions. Ma question, si je l'ai écrit. Je voulais savoir si euh, c'est possible de faire mm. venir euh, un des formateurs dans un des pays autres pour mm. la formation plus pratique sur le, le, la, la publication du dioxyde de carbone. Parce que comme euh, il présente des avantages. Euh, température et, et euh, pression très bonne par rapport aux autres études. Merci beaucoup pour la question. Bien sûr, pour, pour cela, on, on, on trouvera le moyen pour bien sûr préparer ou préparer à cela parce que ça demande beaucoup de moyens, ça demande une préparation. On va programmer, on souhaiterait avoir des formations quelque part en Afrique, les moyens permettant pour avoir plus d'une personne, parce que vous voyez que si on vous demande de venir en Europe, ça va coûter beaucoup, ça va demander beaucoup d'argent, et nous souhaitons et que nous puissions un jour avoir assez de moyens pour organiser des, des formations un peu partout en Afrique, dans plus, au moins les quatre régions, pour qu'on puisse regrouper tiens dans le même pays pour faire une formation avec une langue locale qui permet à tout le monde de participer, on fait une formation en français ou une formation en anglais ou une formation en arabe, formation en portugais, en tout cas, pourquoi pas un jour même avec les langues nationales. Vous savez que tous les techniciens n'ont pas été à l'école. Donc, on souhaite un jour y arriver. Monsieur Faraday, ouais. you are here. Yes. Ouais, bon... ouais. Ouais. Bonsoir. 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 Oui, c'est bien mon remercie, il y a depuis la République démocratique du Congo. Premièrement, je salue le président. Ma question est celle-ci. Est-ce que... Merci. Parce que... Parce que pour les compressions... On, 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 Faraday, on ne vous entend pas. Soyez un peu plus près du micro. Pour les Et soyez bref, s'il vous plaît. Pour les compressions R600. Parce que y a des... votre, votre micro ou votre voix est très basse. Et comme ça, on, on va passer à quelqu'un d'autre. Je disais ceci. Là, je passe... Ok. On ne vous entend pas, M. Faraday. Peut-être c'est la connexion. Ok, je vais demander à M. Gozo, M. Jacques Gozo, 
d'activer, bien sûr, parce que si vous levez votre main, regardez votre appareil, parce que j'en vois il y a un lien qui vous arrive, qui vous dit que je vous promets, je vous permets de parler, donc vous avez accepté et après activer votre micro. Donc, regardez votre téléphone ou votre ordinateur ou je ne sais pas, l'appareil que vous utilisez, parce qu'il ne fait pas tout de lui-même. Il faut que vous regardez et vous appuyez, sinon on ne va pas avancer. Oui, je pense que ça va déjà. Monsieur Zang Gosso, vous n'êtes pas là. OK, on va donner la possibilité à Monsieur Yaya Ndiaye un des fidèles actifs de U3AG. M. Yaya a accepté à allumer votre caméra, votre micro et parler. M. Faraday, si vous avez résolu votre question de problème de voix, on vous reviendra. M. Yaya Ndiaye. Oh là là. We have some issue with your technology issue here. I'm sorry. Oui, bonsoir. Bonsoir, qui c'est qui, s'il vous plaît? C'est Monsieur Yayanjai. Ok, Monsieur Yayanjai, allez-y. Oui, pour moi, c'est des salutations et des appréciations. Ok. Tout ce que l'Afrique a besoin aujourd'hui, c'est des formations sur les nouveaux gaz qui sont à venir, des gaz inflammables. Des gaz qui sont vraiment un peu dangereux. Donc, les frigoristes, les techniciens d'Afrique ont besoin de formations à la DC. Je salue Merci I3 beaucoup. Arc, je salue mm -hmm. Area, je salue vous, le président, M. Madi Sakande, vous êtes vraiment brave. Vous jouez un rôle très, très important dans l'Afrique, surtout dans le domaine du froid. Merci, on vous salue Merci beaucoup. à vous. Merci tout, pour votre témoignage. On va passer oui, à la deuxième euh, on, on vous remercie vraiment pour, pour ces mots. C'est nous qui vous faites tous plaisir. Vous êtes tous acteurs du froid. Madi Sakande est un d'entre vous. Donc, vous êtes aussi persévérant que Madi Sakande continue à travailler comme ça, tous ensemble. Nous allons faire le point, un moteur de développement pour le continent. Merci. Inch'Allah. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur Faraday, je suis à vous. Oui, bonsoir. Je pense que ça passe déjà bien. Oui, maintenant, on vous entend mieux, oui. Oui. Je voulais demander ceci, parce qu'il y a des fois qu'avec les compresseurs R134, quand il y a un problème du courant, mm -hmm. vous, voyez, vous allez voir que les compresseurs ne fonctionnent pas bien. Mais avec l'expérience, il y a des fois, si vous changez l'huile, vous videz tout et vous tirez même au vide. Et vous, Alors, le... monsieur, monsieur Faraday, vous, vous êtes charger. un peu hors sujet. Vous êtes un peu hors sujet. Nous, nous sommes en train de parler des réfrigérants inflammables. On reviendra, on a beaucoup d'autres formations. Certainement, on reviendra là-dessus. On va passer la parole à, 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 à monsieur que j'ai perdu, j'étais là tout de suite, il a donné la possibilité, il a disparu. Ok, monsieur Jean Kabambi. Allô? Oui, monsieur, monsieur Gozo, vous êtes là maintenant. Ok, allez-y s'il vous plaît. Oui, bonjour, c'est Gozo depuis Ouaga au Burkina. Ah bon? Oui, ma question c'est de savoir concernant les nouveaux gaz. Oui. Aujourd'hui, nous formons des acteurs de froid sur le terrain, mais concernant oui. les commerçants qui, qui mm -hmm. stockent les gaz dans un magasin, tout ça, qu'est-ce qu'on fait pour eux? Parce qu'ils bon, nous accompagnent aussi dans le travail. Quoi. Je pense que vous l'avez bien dit. Vous avez des sensibilités par rapport à ce que vous avez vu. Si, si c'est votre fournisseur, vous devez bien sûr aller les sensibiliser parce que s'il explose un jour, vous n'avez plus de fournisseur de gaz. Donc, vous avez intérêt à l'informer. Vous n'allez pas lui dire de venir faire une formation de technicien parce que certainement, il n'a pas les compétences pour devenir technicien parce que c'est un commerçant. Mais vous devez l'informer. Vous, en tant que technicien, je sais, on sait qu'il y a le bureau aux hommes qui fait un certain travail dans les différents pays. Mais vous, en tant que technicien aussi, vous devez le dire parce que s'il explose mal les réfugiés, il ne sait pas qu'il y a danger. S'il si explose, c'est sûr que vous avez un ami qui est en moins, c'est-à-dire votre fournisseur de réfrigérants. Donc, c'est à vous de le conseiller. Vous savez que tous ceux qui ont participé à ce webinaire, vous êtes tous des potentiels formateurs et des passeurs d'informations. Parce que ça, nous, en tant que u 3 ac malheureusement, nous pouvons dans les détails, nous ne pouvons pas faire des actions pays par pays, vendeur pour vendeur, technicien par technicien, mais nous pouvons passer à travers vous. Aujourd'hui, il y a eu plus de 100 personnes qui ont participé. Chacun de vous est un porteur d'informations par rapport à un technicien qui n'a pas participé, par rapport à son collègue, par rapport à son revendeur. Tout ça, vous devez passer la chaîne, pas même par rapport au client. Voilà. Donc, il y a est en train de, de sensibiliser autant que possible. On a besoin du travail de tout un chacun. Il y a trois ne peut rien faire. 
ce sont les associations nationales qui font tout ce que I3A fait, c'est ce que nous sommes en train de faire. Relever le défi de l'information, élever un peu la conscience et faire comprendre les enjeux importants du foie. Le travail sur le terrain, ce sont les associations qui le font. Chaque pays a sa particularité, chaque pays a ses réalités. Donc, vous devez travailler, bien sûr, avec la réalité du terrain. Je souhaite que vous informez vos revendeurs du réfrigérant que ce n'est pas bien de les stopper tous dans une salle fermée et tôt ou tard, ça va exploser. Lui-même, le lui-même, il ne sera plus là. Et vous non plus, vous n'avez plus de réfrigérant à, à payer. Monsieur Jean Kagam. Euh, Merci beaucoup. Votre micro, ouvrez-le. Merci, euh, Président. J'ai juste oui. deux petites questions. D'abord, je commence oui. par remercier euh, tout le monde pour le service. Alors, ma petite question, elle est technique. Elle est la suivante. Mm -hmm. La pompe à vide pour tirer sous vide, par exemple, un climatiseur, la pompe à 3 mètres. Alors, je ne sais pas quelle disposition on pourra prendre pour le flexible qui peut aller jusque là, à 3 mètres pour tirer sous vide. Ça, c'est la première question. La deuxième, nous avons des unités intérieures parfois qui sont à plus de 10 mètres. L'unité extérieure ici et l'unité intérieure à plus de 10 mètres. Est-ce qu'il faut réajuster la charge par rapport à ce qui est sur ah, 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 ou bien il faut s'en tenir seulement. Excusez-moi, je vais résoudre un problème technique. Oh. Je vais exclure quelqu'un d'ici, comme ça on va gagner un temps. Ok, allez-y, excusez-moi. Alors, je disais, la pompe à vide à 3 mètres, quel genre de oui. flexible qu'on pourrait utiliser pour tirer sous vide Ça, c'est la première question. Okay. La mm -hmm. deuxième il y a des fois l'unité intérieure est à plus de 10 mètres, l'unité extérieure loin. Alors, est-ce qu'il faudra suppléer la charge en R32, par exemple, ou bien il faut seulement se limiter à ce qui est sur la plaque signalétique Merci. Alors, alors, je vais vous répondre directement. On n'a pas le temps, donc je devais passer ça à Marino. Marino, euh, vous allez m'excuser, je vais le répondre rapidement pour la question du temps, qu'on est déjà hors du temps de trois minutes. Alors, premièrement... Et... Les flexibles de 3 mètres, ça existe. Donc, si ce n'est pas disponible en Afrique, justement, il faut qu'on travaille à ce que tout ça, ça sera disponible. Sinon, vous pouvez même avoir des flexibles de 15 mètres. Ça existe. OK Non, non, non. non. La... Mandy, Mandy, peut-être, mais peut-être, je ne suis pas clair, mais 3 mètres, c'était la mm -hmm. distance pour plug-in des pompes. Vous avez besoin d'avoir une longue. Uh, to a long electrical wiring, but mm -hmm. go close with the vacuum pump to the machine in order to have a short uh, uh, tubes for vacuum. So three meter is the electrical connection away from the place you work. Then you bring but the if, vacuum if, machine if, close. If, even, even, if, even, yeah. even Marino, sorry, I have to intervene on this. Even If it's a standard pump, you have to keep it. Here we have a standard pump. If you, you are using a standard pump, you have to first start the pump and go to the electrical point to fix it. Then you can make it because you, you don't have to create a spark close to the unit. Okay. Or you have to have a house one, three meters, and then you go directly to the system, and then you can start your pump when you are connected to everything. So the question about the length of the houses is two. The two the look, uh, length of three meters is available in the market. You can even find it at even 20 meters. It's not available in Africa. We have to work to make it available in Africa because at the end of the day, it's just simple houses. Okay? You can get everywhere. So let's come back to us. And the second question is about the quantity of refrigerant he asked him to add it. Monsieur Kabambi, lisez toujours le constructeur. C'est le constructeur qui vous dit combien de grammes il faut ajouter en fonction de combien de mètres vous allongez au-delà de ce qu'il vous donne. Le constructeur, si vous regardez dans son manuel, il vous dit, le réfrigérant, j'ai déjà mis tant de grammes dedans. Si vous allongez jusqu'à, je ne sais pas, 5, 10 mètres, il n'y a pas de problème. Mais si vous allez au-delà de 10 mètres, chaque mètre que vous ajoutez, vous ajoutez tant de grammes. Ça est dans le manuel. On doit seulement juste apprendre à lire. C'est écrit là-bas. 
Ça, c'est une formation, mais il faut le savoir déjà avant de faire le travail. OK, je pense qu'on a fait le tour. On a encore deux mains qui sont soulevées. Et on va les prendre et puis on va clore parce qu'on a commencé avec quelques minutes de retard. C'était très intéressant. Trois heures est, est, est passée. On est encore à 75 personnes connectées. Ça demande vraiment à quel point on est intéressé. Alors, je vais passer la possibilité à M. Kizungu et Egen. Et Missitia, if you are here, you are lady, I would like to hear from you, of course. Because ladies is important in the vision of your triad. So we want more ladies and we want Miss Cynthia here. And also we have Miss Camille Jawad. Jawad, I will be back to you. Let's hear from Miss Cynthia if possible. Bonjour. Okay. Jawad, please. After we will come to Miss Kasamaku. Salam alaikum. Bonsoir à tous et à tous. Merci, le président. Merci Marino, merci Kivas pour la présentation. On a, je suis ravi que je suis le participant avec vous. On a pauvre à, cette, à cet événement. Je suis formateur en froid industriel au Maroc. Et je, je, vraiment, je suis ravi. On a pauvre à cette formation. Je, on a, et je, je, je vous remercie, M. Saïd al pour la, pour la traduction en français. Euh, au, Maroc, au Maroc, on a, on a besoin de, de formations euh, pratiques et théoriques, surtout dans le, les fluides frigorigines à euh, NH3 et, et CO2. Est-ce que. Est -ce que Monsieur Diawad, a... oui. on vous entend. Il y a tellement de problèmes de connexion. Connexion bon, C'est peut-être à mon niveau. Voilà, j'ai vu un certain moment de connexion. Allez, je rapidement à votre question parce qu'on a déjà dépassé le... Il y a une autre personne et on va clôturer. Allez-y rapidement. Vous avez besoin de la formation. Monsieur Saïd est en train de faire un boulet exceptionnel au Maroc. Depuis plus de trois mois, il est en train de dispenser des formations un peu partout dans les villes. Ça va continuer. Nous allons certainement... Bravo le Maroc. Bravo Saïd al pour ce que vous êtes en train de faire. Désolé, j'ai eu un problème de connexion. Donc, c'est moi qui avais le problème de connexion. Excusez-moi, j'ai eu un problème de connexion. En tout cas, on fera tout ce qu'on peut faire pour supporter le Maroc pour que M. CRL Arche puisse continuer dans cet élan. Merci beaucoup, en tout cas, pour les mots. Et une, autre, une autre personne qui avait la main levée, M. Kassama. Après, je passe la parole à M. Allard. Et puis, bien sûr, on va regarder le, le résultat du recensement. On a maintenant 54 sur 54 ont répondu. Monsieur Ella, je dois vous sortir de la... Excusez-moi un instant, je vous enlève de l'interprétation, monsieur Ella, parce que vous êtes dans l'interprétation. Maintenant, vous n'êtes plus interprète, donc ce qui veut dire que ceux qui parlent français doivent s'arranger, ou anglais. Monsieur Ella, s'il vous plaît. Oui, rapidement, sur ce qu'a dit le monsieur, il était présent à notre formation de samedi dernier. On arrivera à la monnaie que c'est on arrivera. Ok, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur Barizi Kizungo. Monsieur Kizungo. D'accord. Donc, Madame Cynthia n'est pas disponible. Donc, je vais vous donner le résultat. I'm going to share with you the, the, the exit poll. Finally. Have you ever used flammable refrigerant during servicing? 80%, 80%, I mean 8 and 0 percent say yes and 20 no. Which refrigerant? We are mentioning at, 20, at uh, 32, 24 percent, at 219, 20 percent, at 600. 26% are 600A, 61% are 1270, 2% are 7, 
70 persons. How have you participated to training session on flammable before this webinar? One person, yes. 59 percent, no. Avez-vous déjà participé à une formation sur les réfrigérants inflammables? 41 personnes, oui. 59 personnes. Avez-vous déjà manipulé les réfrigérants inflammables? 80 oui. 20 non. Vous voyez qu'il y a quelque chose à faire. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a un ange qui manipule le réfrigérant inflammable et jusqu'à aujourd'hui, il ne savait pas ce que c'était. Et nous avons un échantillon de techniciens africains. Nous avons seulement une centaine de techniciens qui ont participé à ça. So, uh, what to say? Before the closure, I have to share the, the floor to my colleague Marco Boni. We can spend a few words and then I will take the floor and hand the webinar of today. Three hours is a record and uh, very proud of you. Marco, your microphone, please. I would like to thank all the UFRIARC board, the president, Mary Sakande, all the participants. We did uh, an historic work, an historic job. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you to my teachers, Marina Bassi, Kivanch, and Jose, and uh, we are at your disposal. We can do training for you, with you, when you want, where you want. Thank you so much, and well done. Applause to you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, well, of course, I would like also to... Also, I to say that I will be in Morocco myself in September for the General Assembly of You Free Art, so I can meet you personally. It's nice. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Marco. Thank you for everything. First of all, I want to thank you for what you are doing in the refrigeration sector, not only in Europe, in this case, also for Africa. We are a friend for a very, very long time. I am happy we are here. You are writing the story here. This is the first ever open event in the world. No one did this kind of web webinar free of charge for all technicians around the world. And this is the first time translating in three languages who speak in Arabic can hear and understand, who speak in Portuguese can hear and understand, who speak French and hear and understand, in English, of course, because it was the main language of this uh, uh, webinar. We are so proud of you. We are proud of all the team. Marino, of course, a friend of mine for many years. Kivan, thank you so much for your time. It's Saturday, you can say I, I have a lot of things to do. I don't have to spend my time with you, African. I have to do something else. But you take your time to be here with us. We are very, 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 very happy for that. We thank you for you for your time. We thank you for your commitment and awareness. And what to say to all my GA team Africans, Africa starting my executive board. We know we are fighting inside to make Africa great. We are doing whatever we can do for free because I remember what, what we, are, we are doing, we are doing for free, not because of money, because money can buy, can pay what we are doing. We are doing what we are believing is. So I thank everyone, everyone starts from Vice President, Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, and Commissioner in charge of ladies, communication. I don't want to call you name by name, probably I will forget because after three hours I can be tired. But I'll thank you, everyone, for what you are doing. I thank all the technicians who are here. Keep being together. Only together we can make the refrigeration sector to be the key of sustainable development of Africa. God bless you all and see you to next time because in June, of course, we, are, we will have a webinar, webinar with media. We will have in June 26, our webinar will be a World Refrigeration Day and we will share with journalists, people from media, we have to spread word. We have to say to African leaders, refrigeration is not luxury, but first we have to understand what is a refrigeration. And this is our role, our main duty as a technician to explain them how to understand the refrigeration sector, how the refrigeration sector can be a, a sustainable and can be sustainable a, a key for development of social economy of Africa. Thank you again. God bless you all. 
Viva Europa, Viva Africa, together we can. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.